Call this meeting to order at 7 p.m. Please rise. Um, Chris Jacobs, would you please lead us in a pledge of allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Welcome, everybody, to the November 21st Hampton Municipal Budget Committee workshop meeting. Uh, my name is Stephen LeBranch. I'm the chairman. I would like to ask the members to please introduce themselves, starting with Sonny Kravitz. Yeah, I'm Sonny Kravitz. Mine Walton. Gina Bonds, Selectman Rep. Mike Plouffe. Danielle Augustine. Jones. David Morrow. Bob Ladd, Precinct Rep. Okay, and we have Barbara Kravitz, our recorder, here as well. Um, tonight we're going to be going over the 2018 budget for the Department of Public Works. Um, Chris, if you'd please come up to the table. Um, we have Chris Jacobs, the department head for the Public Works Department. Jennifer will be along shortly, and Bree Hall, she's uh, our newest operations coordinator. Okay. So, uh, we wanted to have the hot seat. Yeah. Uh, so we have Chris Jacobs and Marie Hall and uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Sir. I believe Danielle is seeking your attention. Oh, I'm sorry. Danielle. No, no. Oh, you're not? No. I thought you were going to move the Department of Public Works. Oh, wait, wait one minute, yeah, please. Well, well, just a second. Just a second. Get there. Uh, Barbara, I want you to note that Steve Henderson is excused tonight. And um, I haven't heard from Ginny Bridal, so I don't know what's going on there. Okay, so in any case, um, so here's Jennifer Hale now. <laughs> Come on in, we're waiting for you. Um, so did you have something that you wanted to say, Danielle? Yeah, so I'll move the Department of Public Works in the amount of uh, five million, $465,813. All right, do we have a second for that? Sure. Okay, so Tim seconded, Danielle moved it, and at this point, um, I would like the uh, department, uh, Chris, to pre please present his budget to us. And the way we did this, Chris, with the fire and uh, police, it worked out very well. You present the entire budget, and then when you're finished, then um, you can answer questions. Okay. People. Okay. All right. Um, so we're all on the same basis. Uh, we had discovered a mathematical error in the, it's the first item I'd like to bring up, and it's actually a solid waste on page 51. And people want to. And the reason why I bring it up is not to change the tempo, but uh, it, it does adjust the, the bottom line okay. very significantly. Uh, 51 was on my detail sheets. It is line uh, 0264324253320. It's in the area of waste hauling. Okay. We had in um, in the calculation uh, for 386 loads uh, from July to December, and you can see that's quite a jump from 140 the previous six months. Um, jumped right out at us that that's uh, an error. So it's actually, we should be planning for 153 loads. Um, the total, when you looked over at, let's see which line I need to adjust. So, um, the line that reads 130, 138, 830. Yes. Should actually be, 87166 Say that again, please. $87,166. Thank you. Now, Chris... Do you have a delta on that, Kristen? A, ch uh, a Chris? change? The change is 51664 lower. No. We'll take that as an amendment afterward, I think. Okay. okay. Um, and, Chris, when you change that... Because the board of the you had asked for requested 
138-830, and then the Board of uh, Selectmen made that number 136-200. Okay. Right. Um, okay. So, but by changing that, it decreases it to quite an amount. Um, yeah. And, yeah. I okay. Went, and my calculation of uh, Mr. Jones, the 51-664 is different from the, sorry, the 136-260 number that was the... I was kind of given it was the default one. In other words, the adjusted line. And what was the final number again? It would be 87. No, 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 no. Okay. For the entire, the grand total, that oh, changes that. I didn't even go. Oh, you haven't done that yet? Okay. So, well, did you give me the delta? Is that the aggregate number for delta? <coughs> the delta was just for that line or that. It wasn't for the whole delta. It wasn't for the whole budget. It was just for. Right, right. Cause, so we can, we can take your DBW budget after we approve it yep. and then amend it to be a reduction of that amount. Yep. Okay, okay, that's fine. That All right, so okay. having said that and established that, you want to start at uh, no, I'll go back to the beginning. 43, okay, thank you. I didn't mean to, it's no, no. it was such a big discrepancy that um, yeah. we thought that it was uh, important to bring it up first rather thank than you. last. Thank you. As we get going through that, um, some of these minor ones, you realize just how minor they are. I'm all set at the we find you out. Um, just a comment on the, okay, Highways and Streets Administration. If that's where everybody's at. Um, you'll notice it's 1.84%. Uh, we didn't lay anybody off. We didn't uh, reduce our staff. It's just that we do have, and one, two, three, we'll have four retirements this year. So operating-wise, um, uh, junior people are moving up, filling those voids, and their pay rates are less. Under career incentives, uh, the 100% loss is we had one employee that uh, was uh, uh, eligible for that particular career incentive. That employee has retired, so that in truth in spending or truth in budgeting, we bring that line to zero. Um, I'm going at the next one is electric at 8.64%. Um, literally, that's just more in keeping with how our bills have been over the last couple of years. You'll notice in 16, that was 12203 um, So we've adjusted that up, trying to keep more with the average. Um, it isn't that we have more lights or anything like that. We are in the process of uh, replacing lights and putting in LEDs, but that's being done on a almost a light-by-light -light fixture basis so we don't... Uh, how long will that generally? Oh, oh. The end. So it just doesn't end, bust the budget. It's a multi-year program. It, I don't have a deadline or anything like that. Make a note, um, and make water, a note, Dave, and then we'll get to it. At we'll the do. Thank, thank you. Okay, thank you. Water went up 55%. Um, we're not using more. It's just that uh, Aquarian's now in a monthly billing process. And with the number of pump stations we have and locations, um, we pay about 2500 more per year in uh, just literally in billing fees. It isn't really due to water. Uh, gasoline uh, is a 37% jump. Um, to be honest with you, that's a number I, we get from the finance office, so I complete somewhat ignorance on that. And the same thing with respect to the diesel fuel. Uh, we've agreed to, to live with their, the numbers that they present. Um, the next biggest increase is uh, engineering services. We had some of that <coughs> Um, did you want to speak to that because you had the... Yeah, where did you go? Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I just right. skip over this. All right, so, yeah, the engineering services have everything to do with the capital improvement plan, looking at the projects that we're looking to move forward from 2018 to 2022, looking at how we weren't uh, appropriating enough money in the designing phase. Um, it was just a construction dollar, so a proportion of each of those projects going into the engineering budget when we need to hire outside consultants. Okay, uh, moving on. If, yes. Otherwise, um, I'm at uh, under paving and reconstruction, the repairs and maintenance line is up a little 2.62%. Uh, uh, a lot of that is tied to the cost we have contracts for line painting crosswalk crosswalk traffic markings and also weed control 
it seems that all three of those are creeping up slightly, but those are contracted services. Um, the other thing that we're trying to address uh, in the next jump is at 12.5% of street signs, we're trying to go from eight to 9,000. We're finding that we're falling behind. Um, coming up this year, we're actually instituting that asset management software system that we uh, have discussed and mentioned with you in the past. We've purchased the software. It's been installed. Uh, I shouldn't say installed because it's not up and running. We've married all of our paper data with the lot parcels. And here in December and in January, we're actually going to be trained on that software. So in going through the process of giving that data to them, we recognize that we are literally falling behind. I have signs that even last week someone sent me an email, can't even read the sign. It has zero reflectivity. Um, so there's a number of things that we need to do with that money. Um, let's see. <clears throat> repair under storm drainage repairs and maintenance. Um, again, that's this is directly related to the CIP. Uh, it's an increase 30 percent uh, again 2018 to 2022 uh, with planned pipe projects. And, it, and you'll see that next year and the year after that. I mean, if if we stay true to the CIP, is that. Um, we literally identified these projects street by street and where we need to go with that. And there again, it's not so as not to have a steep rise in it, but a methodical approach to the to the maintenance plan. That's where why you see that as a 30% increase. Uh, I'm going to jump all the way down to snow and ice removal. Uh, overtime wages in the winter, um, they are up slightly at 3.5%. That earlier. Averages and the fact that we know with the retirement coming that there's going to be extra uh, work out there and um, direction uh, through our sub consultant. Yeah. Um, two, two, yeah, three, three of the four retirees actually plowed snow. So uh, after December 19th, we're going to have a huge vacuum in uh, a couple of those routes. I have one um, long-term plow driver dealing with a medical issue. I uh, will not allow him to plow uh, this year um, as he undergoes treatment. Uh, so there's a fourth one, and that's one of the key routes over towards Ancient Highway. Um, so, yes, in anticipation of that, that's why that number is going up. And hired equipment winter uh, up 83%. We did use more uh, labor last year. And I want to give you the five-year average. Yeah, hired equipment winner. We were uh, we we're requesting forty-five. The three-year average is one hundred and thirty-four. That is somewhat falsely high due to the three hundred and twenty we spent in the winter of fourteen fifteen. But each year we're we're finding that we're because of the turnover in staff trying to train new staff um, you know the fact we only get one bidder uh, our snow contracting services are going up uh, let's see next jumping down to um, municipal sanitation uh, regular waste <coughs> um, you're seeing a wastewater treatment plant and that was Maria I've down noted that that's you and do you want to speak to that or you want me to speak to it for you she's got that good looking okay I didn't know you were gonna have me ops, speak on it, ops coordinator position has been paid out of wastewater treatment portions of it right out of wastewater treatment plant um, Marie is the new ops quarter she does not earn what the previous ops quarter uh, earned pursuant to the uh, Teamster contract, uh, so that results in a 1.35 percent decrease there on that log. Um, you the administrative assistant was paid out of that account. Also, yeah. So okay, he's taking the spot that I that, was in. That's true too. You're right. We starting the 27th, we actually have Marie's replacement, uh, somebody internal to town government, uh, starting uh, in her position, and that also is a change in or a decrease in the salary lines. As you can see, when we go through this process, um, 
and you might have caught it in front of the Board of Selectmen, a, a real sharp pencil is used. In other words, if uh, between uh, Christy, myself, um, Marie, and Jennifer, if we note that things are, you know, markedly coming down, we just don't, you know, don't leave them there. We, we are using a sharp pencil to bring you forth um, a realistic, as accurate as possible budget when, on certain lines when possible. That's probably a bad lead up to uh, jumping over to wastewater treatment plant. And um, we already there. The part time wages at twenty up twenty seven percent. Why? And let me see if I what I had written down. It's the competitive rates trying to get someone who's qualified to be at the wastewater treatment plant. Again, we've calculated the standard rate we pay, which is $14 an hour, which is our lowest starting salary rate in the SEA agreement, times 40 hours times 13 weeks. So that's literally how we came to that math. It's, there's no uh, greater logic than that. I can tell you, though, it has been hard to find someone for all 13 weeks. Um, the person that we normally hired the last two seasons uh, cannot return with us this year due to other commitments. Um, so it's going to be hard to find somebody on this, this seasonal basis uh, to work in the, the wastewater treatment plant. Um, career incentives, again, are at, are at zero. Uh, we're right at 1,000. That's uh, Mike Carl's the only one that uh, qualifies for that particular career incentive. Engineering has gone up 380%. That is a direct, you know, it was budgeted as 10. We were requesting 48,000 straight across the board. That is totally due in part to the facilities study that was recently completed. Um, if, for instance, well, I'll give you for instance, if the, we're asking for a Warren article money, and, and I know that's not really on the table for discussion tonight, but we do need this engineering money to actually start, jumpstart some of these projects. Also, what we're finding is um, we're already using a portion of the money. One, to address the, we have the AOC, Administrative Order Consent, that still hasn't been uh, laid down or laid flat. Uh, we're still in the process of negotiating with the state. And uh, to give you, for instance, of where this engineering money would be used, last week one of the raw pumps, the uh, bearings are going. You can, sounds like it needs a new transmission. Um, first, first or second call was to find out what it's going to cost to repair it. But then secondly was to talk with Wright Pierce and our engineering firm to find out what had been planned as far as the facility study going forward for that particular pump or style of pumps, and they're still reviewing that. Um, that costs money for me to have them review it to make sure that we get a compatible or compatible uh, pieces of equipment put in compliant with what the, the uh, facilities plan laid out. So that's really the um, thrust or the market increase behind that uh, budget line. Um, I'll next jump down to uh, heating fuel. Um, we've typically used 24 6 at least that's what the actual was um, I don't know when the budget was prepared it was at 40 I was going back through this budget before uh, my first presentation the Board of Selectmen I'm the one that cut 10,000 out of it to bring it back to a more realistic number overall um, I mean we're going to use what we're going to use in heat but at the same time I've asked the staff to be very um, diligent about monitoring the heat usage or the thermostat. Sludge tipping fees, 7.99, uh, minus 8 percent increase. Why? We're just generating more sludge. We have more waste coming to the plant. We're, uh, the sludge volume is a direct correlation to the total number of gallons of waste that we process. Uh, we have been, this year, we're up about, I would say, at least 10 percent in actual uh, sludge volume and fees. If I can look sideways, 
258 uh, is what the 2017 budget is. We've already spent uh, 163. Um, that number pretty much will uh, be used up by the end of the year um, because what that number doesn't reflect is uh, we've cleaned out, had to, we do an annual cleaning of the sludge disposal area. There's a lot of grit in there. That all comes into the, or comes out of this tipping fee. But um, they've gone up slightly on the rate, but not as much as we are disposing of a lot more um, sludge. Um, grease, I noticed right below it is still the same at 3600 but I can tell you that's a pending problem too. Um, we right now have a three foot thick floating morass of grease in the Church Street pump station due to grease disposal in the beach area. Um, we just spent um, $7,000 hauling about two thirds of it out and we still have more to go. Um, we can't use our own equipment, um, the tank's too deep. So that also will come, you know, comes out of things like uh, it's not coming out of grease disposal. It's going to come out of sludge one way or the other. It's it's there, and we have to deal with it. Uh, supplies and maintenance is up uh, another nine percent. Um, part of that is uh, again dealing with the AOC. Um, we are seem to be. I know we are. We're not seem to be. We're buying more lab supplies. They're expensive. Uh, we're being asked to do more and more uh, five-day uh, BOD testing uh, to make sure that we we are staying within our um, our operating permit, and um, this is somewhat in a direct relationship to what we went through with the, the sewer force mains under the marsh. It's a direct fallout of that. Um, we're being mandated to do that, not only through the state, but uh, basically to give them some assurance that uh, the force mains are not an issue or are a stable issue at this point and that we can operate within our permit. I'm going to jump down to solid waste collection. That's where we actually um, pick up the trash. Um, wait, wait, Chris, I don't mean to interrupt. No, no, no. Did you, you jumped over new equipment under? Uh, I did, okay. That's a hundred percent. Use the glasses that I brought. <laughs> but if I do, I can't see you, folks. <laughs> the, one that the composite samplers. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. That you're right. It's going to go from ten to twenty, or we're requesting it to go from ten to twenty. Correct. We, um, as part of that, operational issues that we face at the plant, we have what's known as composite samplers. Um, we have one, two three major lines coming into the to the plant. We we get different types of flow from the different lines because one of them comes from the beach, one of them comes from Tide Mill Road, i.e. the uh, Park Ave neighborhood. And the other one is the what we call the Northeast Interceptor, which uh, behind Peniman Lane, that area, uh, parallel to High Street. Um, we have composite samples, i.e. they literally grab a small amount of uh, sample of what the waste is, uh, the, and we test those. And the need for the increase in the composite samplers is because the waste is starting to vary so differently it really affects the amount of aeration we use, chemicals. We're trying to figure out how to predict, how to adjust the cake mix, if you will, as this effluent is coming into the plant. So that's why they're, uh, it's been, Partly that was suggested out of the facilities plan, and partly it's uh, we identified it even before then just to make our job, our work at the plant, I won't say easier, but at least be able to, to react to it and adjust to it. Sorry for skipping that. Um, Solid waste collection, regular wages. Uh, there has been some turnover in that section. Again, um, wage adjusters, adjustments are down. Um, but in the case of doing that, yes, the part-time wages are going to be up. Again, it's to hire qualified people to predominantly work uh, solid waste collection for those 
uh, not only the holidays, but the 13 weeks during the summer. But the, you can see that was offset by a negative 31% increase in, in uh, overtime wages. So um, all in all, just a, a more of a balancing act. But Wayne? I do have a comment here next to um, vehicle maintenance. It's a zero line. You see uh, where we had originally requested 49.6. But you may notice that we paid or spent 83, 179 earlier in the year, in last year. That's to repair and um, keep on the road the three sidearm compactors, collection trucks that we have, and the two rear packer trucks where we tip carts into the back end of the trucks. Um, did you, were you able to pull that other information? I was, so. but it's mostly in my head. Okay. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, no, I had the uh, vehicle foreman do a summary of the trash and recycling vehicles and the dollars that we have spent repairing them. And in the last quarter alone, the last three months, we have spent almost thirty thousand uh, dollars repairing vehicles ninety, ninety one, ninety two, and ninety three. And that just goes to show and why uh, perhaps this line item that's being kept flat. Uh, may be low when you look at what we spent in 2016, what the actual will be in 2017. And I think I've said it before, probably here and at Board of Selectmen, uh, they're not going to get better. As a matter of fact, a vehicle we've already spent 30000 on uh, is sidelined and it's in for another $13,000 repair uh, that hasn't yet hit this, uh, these data sheets. These dates, yeah. Right. Um, these are the latest and greatest. Uh, numbers um, so that particular number is very artificially low um, again I'll skinny and skimp and, and do I would like it to be higher I'd entertain a suggestion if somebody thinks you can make it higher but at the same time um, when I'm faced with these challenges it's just a matter of just getting it done um, I'm hoping that next year won't be as bad but I don't think I have no indication that it won't be. I just, I'm just deluding myself. Uh, make it, make it more critical is with the, all the number of Warren articles that uh, have been presented and the huge size of some of those numbers. Uh, I believe the board of selectmen has voted not to uh, bring forward or uh, further continue with a vehicle replacement line. And one of the packer trucks was in that particular vehicle maintenance line. Uh, I understand totally there has to be some give and take, and that's one of the lines that's been chosen. So the point is that I have to live with maintaining that vehicle or these vehicles. Um, and um, But that, that particular line, while it reads zero, is low. Um, moving on, landfill operations. Wait, um, wait. What go about ahead. replacement Sorry. equipment? Did I <laughs> three, more, three lines down, or two lines. No, this is the 60,000. <laughs> I think we were asking originally okay. uh, for request for this year's budget and that through uh, discussions at the meeting it has come out. So that's why it's saying oh. zero change, oh, oh, oh. right? Am I reading that correctly? Replacement equipment, mm -hmm. not applicable, no change because the default budget is zero. Well, it says purchase a new compact for $60,000 on page 50. My discussions with the manager is... Uh, to get that done now rather than waiting. Good. And that would take it out of okay, good. this year's appropriate. Right, so it would be a zero Perfect. on. Perfect. It's still in here. <coughs> so in the, uh, okay, so thank you. For, thank so in that case, it doesn't belong in here. Correct. Yes, it'll have to come out of the, the bottom line yeah. when we. Yes. Right, we have to make another adjustment on this. Yes, okay. 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 That'll have to be another another uh, motion. But it didn't have a but, but the, uh, uh, yeah, Mr. Jones would have is to be correct, correct. In, in the moat and the, the bottom, the, the bottom, the bottom the, line, the, the line that I had this year's money. They they they'll motion yeah. forward. They have have we'll, we'll speak to that after yep. this motion. Yep. We'll make the appropriate adjustments. Okay. All right. Or what we see is appropriate anyway. <laughs> okay. Thank you. So landfill operations, uh, Chris, go Groundwater on. monitoring. Um, you're going to see it makes a huge jump at, uh, um, 550 percent. The previous line also 
the monitoring and inspection, and it comes up uh, higher at 28.5. Uh, uh, we're getting hammered on um, the cost of lab work to actually get the samples from the landfill uh, tested. Something that has occurred since we initially put together this budget is uh, the whole discussion of PFOAs around the Coakley landfill. As a result of that, the state has ordered increased testing of all landfills uh, with respect to PFOAs. Um, I think we have five monitoring wells. They have a high and a low, so there's a total of 10. It's almost $300 a piece for the, so it, that's the major jump in the, in the, in the analysis, um, is that we are, before the state even mandated us, the Board of Selectmen uh, basically directed me to go ahead and do that, because we, they, we wanted to be proactive rather than reactive, but since then the state has basically mandated it under uh, landfill closure license. Um, waste, moving on to waste transportation and the waste tipping fees. Um, the 3.01% is really just, uh, we're not generating much more than 10 or 20 tons, more than we did last year. Uh, so that's not really the cause of the 3% increase. The cause is really contractual. Uh, every year our contract with waste management does have a uh, consumer price index uh, uh, fact factored into it. Um, it's hovered somewhere between 2 and 3 percent. Um, but overall, if you look at the several tons more that we are throwing away and the, the CIP, consumer, no, CPI, Consumer Price Index, too many acronyms, huh? Um, that's the re re reason for the 3 percent increase. And the next line, as I already addressed, is not a 69 percent increase. That's a that was bogus. Moving on to transfer station, uh, the wages are going down 1.2 per 7 percent. Essentially, Mark Richardson is retiring. Uh, people are being promoted up into the, uh, other positions, um, but their wage rates are, are lower. Uh, but on top of that, we are, again, um, due to the extreme turnover that we're experiencing, uh, over time, our part time wages are up. Uh, it was difficult this year to get somebody that actually one knew that what they were doing. And secondly, um, that's where really where it relates to is um, that. Uh, we've got a big decrease in the staff development at negative 28%. It's because the state's basically gone to every other year of. Right, Go so ahead. we don't owe anything in 2018. Our renewals for the right. solid operator's license aren't due in 2018. But if you flash forward in your crystal ball, I'll be asking you for a 28% increase in that line next year <laughs> because they will be in, in, you know, it's like $50 a person, but so again, it's, uh, it, it is what it is. It's the sharp pencil. Um, that well, I'll go all the way down to uh, sewer line maintenance, and I think you want to address that as Right. Sewer uh, line CIP. maintenance is also part of the CIP, looking at what sewer lines need to be replaced, including Elaine Street, uh, which is what we're targeting with the budget funds for next year. And then also looking at, I call it the trans marsh, but it's basically uh, the sewer run that runs underneath the marsh behind the uh, west side of Ashworth Ave over to the Church Street pump station, making sure that those pipes and structures are lined uh, to get rid of that uh, infiltration, which adds to the wastewater treatment plant. That's all clay sewer pipe. Yeah. Okay. That's all the, that I have for you. Well, you have, let's see, sewer treatment. Oh, is there one sorry. more? One more page, yeah. yeah. We'll one more. The Exeter yeah. Sewer Agreement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yes. Um, right. Now the sewer, Exeter sewer agreement went from essentially um, the seven thousand, or really we, last year's bill was sixty three sixty five. The new bill is twenty three six forty seven. They voted in a bond increase or a bond of uh, I believe forty one or forty two million to replace their wastewater treatment plant. And because we do send uh, effluent in that direction from the Horner Lane, Donna Lane neighborhood, um, that's our proportional share. 
And then you have one more line. <coughs> um, wastewater treatment plant maintenance. $70,000. Up from, up from sixty. Yeah. I mean, it's all the uh, 675 pieces of equipment we have that the facility study has not only identified need removing our own uh, daily wear and tears. These are the VFDs, the variable frequency drives. Uh, we've had two or three of those go. These are the smaller pumps, not necessarily the big intake pumps. This is just keeping up with hoses, um, bisulfite pipes, you name it. We repair it. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I have a couple of things myself to start with, and then I'll let the others um, continue on as well. Um, if you go back to um, page... Under administration, federal water stormwater requirements. Um, that that was the thing that you had talked about for several years in a row that was going to be coming into uh, to be put into effect. Is it in effect now? Permit's been issued. Um, when we looked at the permit and what it what it got issued, the workload that we anticipated that it would tell us to do the first year got reduced by about 25%, so I literally took 25% of that line and reduced it from uh, 50 to 40 uh, because with the work that we have to do, and it has to do with, um, well, some of the mapping that we're doing under asset management, but also it has to do with more with preparing uh, how we would manage stormwater at uh, every town property, town hall, <coughs> schools. They're making me responsible for the schools. Um, town parking lots, wastewater treatment plant, transfer station, the whole works. So this this 40000 is going to address a very hectic year with respect to paperwork. I probably am going to sub a good portion of it out because we physically can't get it done. I just There's not enough brain to go around. Okay. Under engineering services, Chris, um, mm -hmm. the 57% the increase um, you have, um, it talks about uh, one of the things is Hops and Manchester flooding, Ross Ave, uh, Charles Street. So the last night you were talking, the selectmen at the selectmen's meeting, they were talking about doing a sort of an overall, uh, the big picture thing. Is that going to change this, possibly change this number? It, it sounded as if this, what they're talking about doing last night would be more inclusive of looking at the big picture. And that's why I wondered if if this number here, um, if that, you know, if it, if it even should be there at all. Oh, it should be there at all. I mean, that that number... Is just a component. The Hobson or Manchester right. flooding issue is a component of that 47,000. If you look at our miscellaneous on call <coughs> services, that's whenever we need someone to go look at something structurally. Um, we need a structural engineer to do that. We've had that come up quite a few times. Um, any of the wetland permitting, we have culverts off of uh, ancient highway that need to be repaired. So we always have to get a wetland scientist to go out there, do the high observable, and then fill out the paperwork. So if you're looking at that whole line, the Hobson and Manchester flooding, that was going to be what we had in addition to support any Warren article that went forward. Okay. It wasn't a standalone um, item. So we don't have a structural engineer on staff? Correct. Mm, correct. But you're both civil engineers, correct? correct. Are you uh, licensed, you know, PEs? We're both professional both engineers, right? Perfect. Perfect. Very good. We're very lucky to have you. Um, the next thing that I wanted to mention <coughs> real quick is the um, under sidewalk and curbs. Mm -hmm. um, it seems as if I heard last night um, there was a, you've got $26,000, but did I hear a, uh, a Warren article as well mm -hmm. last night for, was it $40,000? Right, it was. So 50. why, is it 50? So, you know, it's, you've got it in here, and you're also going to have a Warren article. What could you <coughs> that, perhaps? I mean, I know we're not talking Warren articles tonight, but I'm just wondering why it's in here. The last time we did that, the yeah. Warren article was for how much? 
Well, it was the same scenario to your, it was 26,000 in the budget and then we had a warrant article I think for 48, 50,000 and that was for uh, the section of High Street that was Academy, no, Marston, sorry, Marston to Hobbs uh, that we had to remove the trees, replace and do that section. When we got the, got the cost per linear foot to just do that little bit of sidewalk, we tried multiple <coughs> ways to get bigger bang for our buck, and we started um, teaming with the school district and looking at some of the improvements they want to do, especially at Winnicunit in front of, um, my brain is not working, in front of Toll cool. Ave, thank you, <laughs> um, center school, uh, some improvements there, so we put it out to bid again, trying to get even better prices, and at the end of the day, when you're talking 26000 in our budget, that's for little pieces. That's for the accessible ramps. Uh, we put some up on Exeter Road. We redid a section of High Street this year uh, to raise it to work with the flooding. Uh, we redid a small piece over on, uh, I think it was Mill. You know, little pieces. That's the 26. The Warren article stuff is how to try to get section to section okay. and how bad that is. I so that's, that's why it's separate. That's a good explanation. Thank you very and much. And that work last year when we had the 45 and 25 came to like 70,000. With that 70, we did $86,000 worth of work mm -hmm. um, only because that's what the co minimum part of the contract. I basically chopped off sections of the We did, project. but at the same time, we realized that that was integral to the street, so we used curbing money and some paving money and got the $86,000 worth of work done. So the same scenario would occur here. We just... Okay. Thank you. If we put the 40 in, we... Enough said. Yeah. Under municipal sanitation, um, the grease disposal that you talked about, yep. um, it, it's at zero percent, but when you talk about a, a three-foot floating uh, of grease, cake, cake of yeah. grease at the Church Street pump station, is that unique just to Church Street pump station, or does it happen at other spots as well? <coughs> it does happen in the other pump stations, but not to that severity. Extent. Is that from the summer? Yeah. <laughs> the restaurants, um, they are supposed to dispose of grease properly. They're not supposed to be dumping this down the drain, right? Correct. And, and for the most part, they do. Um, I Just think from residential, would you say? Some residential, yeah. Um, but it's funny. A grease... Something, a lot of grease. It, I, I know one or two properties down there that are owned by third parties, and they, they, they lease out management or operation of the property. And I'm sure their lease agreement talks about we have to leave the grease trap clean. It's not like your, a grease trap is not like your dishwasher. You, you, you do want that clean after every run. A grease trap is supposed to look dirty. If it looks pristine, you're using too hot a water or you're using too strong a chemicals to strip it clean. It's supposed to look greasy. That means it's working, okay? So they've taken it, and, and we see a little bit of that every single year. Um, this year, I think um, it's a little more um, problematic. Uh, maybe they all did a better job. I don't, I don't know. Um, the other thing is we are seeing that this pump station operates differently than other pump stations, than, than the previous pump station we had. We have a much bigger wet well. So it is able to store it. I think before... It used to literally pass through and show up in the plant more. Now it just seems to stay in that pump station. Which is which bad as it is for us to have to pay to get re to remove it. It's much better that we're getting it at the pump yeah. station and not through the force mains not at close, the treatment Not plant. clogging up those pipes yes. under the marsh. Yeah, and, and, and or in the plant because yeah. then it's, uh, that's, it's probably we're, we're, we have a harder time dealing with it. Yeah, it's plant. a problem, but it's probably a good problem. Right. And the last thing I have is under um, the repairs and maintenance, the sewer line maintenance um, that's gone up 17.65%, you have $200,000 in that. And the only thing I want to mention is that you talked about um, the, the clay pipes that are behind uh, Ashworth that connect over to, I, they connect to the Church Street pump station, I guess. Yeah, there's yeah. a mixture. Yes. So this Transmarsh yeah. one 
is some of it is I'm so I call it transmarsh. There's right. another name if you um, the different studies. Some of these are actually PVC lines. Um, what are first and foremost in lining are the manhole structures themselves. So as the water comes up, we've already taken the first step, put the Pamrex covers on it to stop the water from getting in. But if you have any type of joints, joints in the bricks or the precast structures and they aren't lined, that water is just coming in as soon as it's rising up. So and that, this is that inflow is a big, big problem. Big you know, the, you know, right, Pierce? The so you're going to not dig up the pipes, the clay pipes, but actually reline them in place? Some of them are going to have to be relined in place because literally they're under structures. Mm -hmm. So we won't be able to dig them up. But, but some of them, depending on where they're located, mm -hmm. whether they're in the dry or not, how close they are to wetlands will determine which approach we use to rehab uh, and re repair these pipes, upgrade them. Can I in, in the here? Wait, 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 Just wait. For education. No, no, no. You can. You're going to be able to ask all the questions you want in a minute. I, I just to finish up with that. Um, I heard at one of the, I think it was a selectman's meeting. Um, they were discussing. Charlie Preston was there talking about Glade Path and the fact that you put the manhole covers that are sealed, I guess, in right. order to prevent this inflow every time there's a high tide. Yep. Um, and so you're making some headway on that? We did 11 structures. 10 or 11, in yeah. In the last month. Yeah. So that, um, you're right, it's, it's called a Pamrex cover. We buy them out of Brazil. Um, uh, so five to seven hundred dollars a piece, if you know what the going rate is. Um, we buy them 10 to 20 at a time. Um, in fact, it, it, there's money left over in Toby's sewer storm drainage and sewer lines this year. We're buying 10 more to replace the 10 we put in. And they're all done in an effort, one, one to meet the stormwater requirements under MS4, to cut down on infiltration to the plant, to save the structure. Because uh, if we have brackish water going through them, it, is, it tends to accelerate the deterioration of those structures. Thank you very much. That was a very, um, very good presentation, by the way. Um, so, do I have some? Anybody have some questions, David? You wanted to go first. I, I had a couple of others. I don't want to stick to the relining all the way here. I'm just trying to understand how you relining a pipe. You say, well, rather than putting a new pipe it's in the uh, ground, we can reline it. It's actually it. really cool. Do you <laughs> it's a uh, don't take it out of the ground. No, no. They make a. It's a long sock with no toe. The toe is cut <laughs> off. Okay. Uh, and it's uh, a very thick sock like, let's say, wool. And they literally impregnate it. It comes up out of the roll, dry. They pull it through a chemical, that <coughs> chemical bath. But what it is, it's an epoxy. And they literally send a mouse down the sewer line, uh, pulling this impregnated cloth. We've, we've stopped the flow. There's no flow coming through it. We've cleaned it ahead of time. And when we get to the next manhole, they grab the end of the sock, they put uh, an air bladder in each end and inflate it. And the sock literally inflates to the inside diameter of the pipe. They then um, pass ultra, uh, a set of lights, um, ultraviolet lights, they pull them it's a timed event um, because the ultraviolet light makes the epoxy set up, and then you're, what you, so what you're left with is a pipe inside of a pipe when you get done, and they just trim off the excess. And in many cases, you can do it because it's super thin, so you're not losing capacity of your pipe. That's amazing. Yeah. Next questions. Um, back on the electricity. Mm -hmm. um, a quick question. Under wastewater electricity. Uh, yeah, highways and streets. We had a little electricity at the yep. right yep. beginning. Yep. And it was 8.64. I just had a couple of minor questions, believe me. And you said, you were talking about the iridescent, whatever, the, the new type bulbs. So my question is, how many lights, ballpark, please, does the town have? I'm making up a number of 5,000. And you're like one fifth through, so we've done 1,000, we have 4,000 to go. Well, these these lights that I'm talking about under this electric bill are only within the highway garage and the office. Um, they're not the street lights. They're not the street. Either. Street lights were moved out of this budget last year. Um, I believe it's 
he took uh, Fred and Christy took hydrants and street lights and put them under their own separate account or lines and they, so they're not in my budget they're not in police they're not in fire they're not in anybody's it's just civic lights I guess you could say so this electricity only deals with how often you know what we do internally within the within the highway garage slash office thank you yeah now the question, uh, two questions, I guess, but they end up being for finance because we talked about gasoline and diesel fuel, and you said they were done by finance. That would be Christy? Yes. Yeah. So I see for gasoline, it, it's going up 37.13%. How is that figured? I mean, I've noticed gas has gone up, but I didn't think it went up 37% in the last year because it was low. Could you help me with that, please? Seat for a second. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, so we can hear you. Basically, what we do is we track the gasoline by month. We have a spreadsheet, and we so we get all of the gallons used. We have can break it down by every single department across the budget. So please fire all of them, and then we total up the average gallons, and then we do the average price per gallon, and then calculate it based on that. So if you're should have brought it out of my book, but if you're looking at the detail sheets, it'll tell you how many gallons I base it on, and then it'll tell you what rate we are using. I believe in this budget, do you guys have a right one? Eight point eight four for gas. We're using a dollar eighty four mm -hmm. for the price. Last year's budget, though, I think it was in at like a dollar seventy five because that's what had been the average for that previous year. Um, so we've kind of really secured those numbers in the past couple of years of budgeting. So because before it was just always the same yeah. dollar value and basically the same number of gallons. But now we literally track it by the month. Are we increasing in, it seems to me what you just said, it wouldn't go up 37% if it was the same. It also appears that we're using more gasoline. Correct. It, do we have more vehicles on the road? Do we have more police cars? We, we actually have less. Less vehicles? They break down. <laughs> I can look for you, though, and tell you how many gallons the budget was based on last year compared to this year. I can give you that information. I don't have it in front of me now. Oh, that's fine. Um, but I can look at last year's budget, though, and Because if it only went from $1.77 to, like, a dollar, whatever you 84, said. 84, yeah. 84. Right, and we're saying and, 14 and it was, gallons. And you were saying you went down in usage. Correct. That doesn't make any sense with this. Right. I can tell you how many gallons it was based on last year, and then that way we would be able to compare exactly what you're asking. Thank you. Can I suggest mm -hmm. that we uh, have that detailed discussion the same that we do the funds? Mr. Cannon? Oh, absolutely. That would be a very good time. Okay. And the same thing with the, the diesel fuel. Yep. Yeah. Please. Thank you. Any other questions, David? No, that that's... I think All right. Who yeah, else um, has questions? I did Oh, have, I'm sorry. You have more. Ooh, a hide equipment winter. Go ahead. <laughs> it did. <coughs> I wanted to ask a question at the time, and I made notes, but uh, it, when we're at the height of equipment for the winter, it's up 83%, and I know you addressed it. I have the answer to your other question. I have last year's budget yep. stuff. Try not to throw anything away. It's sad. Um, let me get back to that page. When This is the backup. Um, last year's is Yeah. Gasoline was eight thousand four fifty six, and diesel was six thousand two hundred fifteen. So yeah, we're, it appears that we're using almost six thousand more gallons. So we've increased the volume. And right. what might be the reason for that? That's like a. I mean, I don't want to throw Christy under the bus, but I think we were last year's numbers. I think were a partial of the year. I don't think it was a true. Yeah, as true. But, well, she'll take care of that. Because I mean, we exactly. have, we're going to have that for a separate meeting. Anyway. Yeah, we have, we have literally less equipment than we did a year ago. I mean, physically less. Plus, with all the retirements, and I have less employees to drive less equipment. So, um, under the snow and ice removal, the height equipment was eighty-three percent. Is that equipment? That you borrow, or is it people you hire for we have a, time? We have a contract, contractor Contractors. that we use. We assign them. Uh, they have one plow route and two plow routes. Sorry, and they also have the high street downtown area. So does that include the contractor and his own truck? Yes. Thank you. Multiple vehicles. Yes, multiple vehicles. Yeah. And we think it's 
this year it's going to be increased because what their charges are going up? Or you just some of the rates have gone up, but also we're noticing the uh, just purely the amount of time it takes to do it. Not a, it's, it's really a, you know if we have a mild winter, less than 20 inches of snow, you'll see that number tumble. If we have 60 to 80 inches of snow, that's probably more reflective of what that number is going to be. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. Anything? They only get called when we get called. As a matter of fact, uh, like on a typical night, let's say it's snowing, an inch and a half builds up, PD calls. Uh, we go out with uh, Salt Run first, which is five of my guys, not the outside contractor. Uh, sand and Salt, uh, get the road surfaces mealy meaning, you know, loose enough that we can plow so that we're not creating pack. And if the storm continues to go on, um, that's when they get called, when the rest of the staff gets called. I know. I've lived here for 37 years, and I can tell you that Hampton does a wonderful job plowing, period. We try. So, that I know. So, thank you. All set, David? Yeah, that's it. Thanks. Okay. Who? Oh, Regina? I have a question. Actually, I have one comment. I know we're going to postpone it, but on the uh, gasoline, I believe the original number that the finance director presented last year was decreased by the budget committee, and I think that is probably what's making that 37% stand out a little bit more. But I also caution that as of 930, we've spent almost 17000 and we've budgeted less than twenty. So I think that, um, which is close, that's only leaving us three grand for the rest of the year. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where that 37% is coming from, because her original calculation was not, I don't believe was the 19743 for gasoline. Right, you're right, yeah, probably not. And also I want to say on the um, extra SOAR agreement, it's gone up from like a little less than 7,000 to 26 or something. Yeah. 20, 23 and change, I believe. Is it possible to? I was actually reading the Exeter newly imp implemented you'd have to ask fees. Them, how much manager. we contribute? You'd have to ask the town manager. <laughs> I have yeah. zero um, skill set with or knowledge of how that was put together, or mm -hmm. it, it, it has to do with the number of users we have and um, currently assigned. And then I'm not, there's numbers in there to where they can retrieve or share portions of their capital improvements, i.e. their new plant. Okay. But I, that's... I was just wondering where we compared to the rest of the Exeter uh, intake as far as percentage-wise, just to justify that increase from, and I'm sure it's justified, but that's pretty... I was with a homeowner increase? from Exeter I the top of my head right now, but. earlier this year, and very small home, $8,000 tax bill, and a $4,000 sewer bill, and only a three-bedroom house, and I was like, yeah. so I, I don't think we're, I, I know the state laws wouldn't allow it as far as the sewer rules under the ENV right. rules. There, there are defined limits as to what they can proportionally pass on, but I'd have to default to what the manager knows about the agreement in more detail. I don't. Anything else, Regina? I'm good. Okay, uh, Mr. Jones. One quick comment. Um, last year's budget committee took the gasoline and diesel numbers from Kristen and actually we increased I believe the cemetery fuel above that so it wasn't a number that we came up with it was a budget committee it was just an adjustment that occurred during the budget committee session as a recommendation from the administration right but I'm thinking so I just wanted to make that clarity that in that line item hasn't been addressed yet by this committee so I think that is accounting for why it's a 37 percent increase uh, well, that we're going to get into in a subsequent yeah. meeting. I just wanted to be clear that right, that number we produced was actually working. coming from the administration, mm -hmm. and we actually increased some of it. So uh, I just wanted to make that comment, and I'll let you go back to the question phase. Sorry for the interruption. Hey, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, was, yeah, thank you for that clarification. 11, okay. Um, so are you well. done? I'm good. Okay. Okay. Um, anybody else? Oh, Sonny, please. Yeah. Okay. 
as I'm looking at this, yes, sir. you know, you're, you're showing a 4.3 percent increase. We see the police want five, and the fire wants six. You know, when the tax, when the voters look at their the warrant articles, or, you know, what's going to happen if you go to the fall bus? Is there grant money coming in? Are you applying for grant money? There must be some federal well, government. Well, grant money would be project related. I understand that. You've got a lot of projects most of this lined up. Is, so. Most of this money is, you know, well over half of it is labor. Ah, I'm well uh, aware of that. Electricity, so that I don't believe their grants are applicable strictly to um, oh, I mean, operating costs. You know, I know you can you move your money around any way you have to. You know, I just thinking. Yep. You know, when the voters come over in the booth and see, because their income isn't going up, Social Security is what, 1.95, and the health care is going to. It's already taken that away. So I'm just trying to figure out how you're going to get these projects done. Are you going to do a bond issue or? With respect to the stuff that's in here, no, no, no. Um, but yeah. I know a number of things have been already trimmed yeah. or decided. I believe it's, they're going to be bond issues given the size. Yeah, the dollars. I mean, you've got a lot of projects you're working on. I, right. I understand that. And, and their yeah. impacts to the tax rate will be calculated, I'm sure, by uh, Christy through finance to determine what those are. Yeah. I do understand it's a lot to ask. Is that all, Sonny? Yeah. Okay. This Thank you. Nick and Diamond. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, Bob, please. You haven't mentioned anything about the Sun Valley pipe problem. Where is that at? Well, um, it's not in. We're not in a critical situation yet. Um, you're probably where wastewater doesn't freeze that easily because it's biologically active it's also being pumped under pressure so but yeah uh, the idea would be we'd have to work through a permitting process if we want to rebury that line right now we're just we're in a monitoring situation with that and it's a small matter you mentioned signs is there any likelihood we'll have any evacuation signs Yes, but if we do purchase them, we won't literally be putting them <coughs> putting them out. We would only put them out in the emergency. You know, that we, there's a, a number of those types of signs that we have. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in a trailer assigned to Seabrook Station, mm -hmm. and some of them are within our own sign room. Mm -hmm. um, but you, if we did purchase them, you won't see them out on the road. Most communities have had those signs on the road forever. So you just have a different philosophy about when to it's use them, I guess? It's a philosophy. It's not my philosophy. It's a philosophy, if you will, in, in me working in concert with the Emergency Operations Center, mm -hmm. the chief, the fire chief, the yeah. state. So, I mean, if they all instruct me to put them up tomorrow, mm -hmm. I'll get it done. But it, as yet, yeah. it's not been done. Yeah. There's nothing in this year's budget, but aren't, don't we have to reach a point where you you do some fiscal planning for long periods of time before we get to the point we're at now where the, the plans in dire straits. The Rockingham Planning Commission is indicating that sea level rise could compromise a third of the assessed value of the beach mm -hmm. or the town. Right. And it just seems, uh, and we have immediately we have problems of flooding at the beach and other major issues. So would it make sense to hire a fiscal planner to project these needs over 30, 40, 50 years and address them year to year so we don't end up waiting until we're at this point? Well, I don't disagree with you. Um, I know when I took this position over two years ago, my discussions with the manager and he approved was that I divulged to you, the taxpayers, to the budget committee, all those things within my operational view. So that's why you've seen things like the seawall, 
the force mains, the wastewater treatment plant. Um, Keith, before me, brought forth the Church Street pump station. Um, we discussed or mentioned infiltration. There's still clay pipes down in the beach area that need to be done. Um, yeah, I think part of the fiscal plan or that, you're, that you're talking about is I think it's becoming a move on us as the departments to bring all these things forward or at least to the public's attention. And then through the process of this committee and working with the budget, uh, the planning board through the CIP and then working with the board of selectmen, you as a community, just to, to, we are determining our fate, if you will. And we, when we decide which projects that we want to bring forth and fund and which ones we don't. And I totally get the idea of, um, as a fellow taxpayer, um, to, you know, that, that there has to be some give and take every single year, that it all isn't going to get done at the, 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 the same year. Thank God the sea level rises and occur, and occur over a four-year period because we got a lot of work to do. But there's, so I, I think we're in a, we are in a good position where we are prioritizing. We are developing, if you will, the CIP. You saw Jennifer mention tonight a number of things. The engineering budget that we'd like to see a percentage increase on to address these issues. Um, the sewer and drain line, where you went from 140 to I think 170, um, we're we're asking for a proportional increase to get these things done over a longer period of time, at least out to the next seven years. Um, and how you we pay for those or finance those is is something we work out with the board of select. Mm -hmm. So I think we are. You know, part of a fiscal plan, any fiscal planner, or any fiscal planner is identifying the needs and, um, if you will, the sources of income or, or what, how much the taxpayer can, can or should reasonably bear. But I think that fiscal plan is a good tool for us, is our CIP that we use. <coughs> That's the way I see it. Beyond that, um, I don't have a I don't have a vision as what 20 years is going to be like. But we're kind of in the position we are in now because people 20 and 30 years ago didn't plan for the replacement of this plan. Well, it goes back even further than that. One of the discussions that as engineers we sit around and have is we come back from World War II and um, and I I'll try and be brief. One of the things the Eisenhower administration realized, okay, we need an interstate transportation system. And, and there's a big building boom through the 50s and 60s to get that uh, in the ground. And it involved a number of bridges. And then 30 years later in the 90s, we're, wow, we're really surprised. All those bridges need work. Um, because even back then it was, um, we'll just build, keep building, making more, building more, making more. Um, but at some point you have to, Realize that if you've built a 10,000 square foot house, you better be have enough capital to maintain that 10 foot uh, square house. I think that's why some of us jokingly say, "Oh, it'd be nice to live in that house." And my wife will say, "Well, no, it's got seven bathrooms to be cleaned. There's no way that's going to be a nice house." Right? So she's physically, you know, or she said, "Those are the seven bathrooms you're going to have to clean." Um, so, as as a Society, and it isn't just New Hampshire or New England, it's nationwide. M more attention needs to be paid to maintaining the infrastructure that we've built. Uh, 1972, the Clean Water Act came in, and that's when you see market improvements in our wastewater treatment plant in 74, 86, and 90. Well, guess what? Those 84 improvements are now, what, 35 or 40 years of age. The, the the wastewater, the raw pumps that are in the plant, the three raw pumps, originally installed in 1974. They've been in position since then, spinning and turning. It's like having the same engine in your car since 1974, if the car still exists. So, yeah, we, we as a society, nationwide, have decided, you know, more attention needs, should be, and needs to be paid attention to the infrastructure we've built. And when we get nipped in the butt is when you have things like sea level rise 
sneak up on you. And you say, yeah, geez, wasn't prepared for that one. Um, that's, that's where we get, that's where we feel this pressure, mm -hmm. that we're getting hit from multiple sides. Yeah, between sea level rise and the wastewater treatment plant. Wastewater treatment and roads and, you know, bridges around the state. The number one red list bridge is the Neil Underwood Bridge. It's the state's issue. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, and so just, they're, they're all here. I would just like to see a collective coming together so we maintain the assets going forward mm -hmm. in a logical, timely fashion so they don't all come to the lights end at the same time. Would agree. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Agree. And hopefully the CIP is the process that we are getting that done. Okay. Anything else, Bob? No. Mike? Uh, this is a great discussion. What happened to Anne Slade? About two years ago, there was a discussion we about... We ran out of time. Ran out of time? Jennifer's and yeah. money and coming. It's, a, uh, it's there. It is. We've gotten the engineers on board. This is part of the engineering funds. I went in, I think, oh, early September, October, as I was trying to kick off the Lafayette Road sewer, uh, get that one done. And we were out of engineering funds to be able to get it done. And then seeing the dollars for what a full dig construction was going to be. We went back and forth and worked out, can we do some of this lining? That uh, was part of the discussion right. so we, a year or so ago, maybe mm -hmm. two. No, but we've determined that mm -hmm. we can't line services, so yeah. we need to traditionally take the services, yeah. line the main, do the stretch, and it's almost 2,000 feet, which is as long, if not longer, than this Lafayette Road project and time one. It's happening. It's not not happening. That Money's been saved for paving. It's a highly traveled road, mm -hmm. and it's probably one of the worst we have for the amount of traffic that's on it. And I, I, it's, it's, it's it's been on the paving plan, but you know, I'm I'm at the point where I it is an issue. can't can't really pave more roads until I start repairing, yeah. repair or replace or upgrade the sewer below. Well, right that don't don't let it fall off the radar because. There's the some radar. residents up there that aren't pleased. Um, it takes time, and I, I know, but when it shows up two or three years and then it just kind of falls off the side somewhere, you you know because you're dealing with it, but nobody else knows. It, I mean, it's a forgotten street. It looks like it's a forgotten street. Huh? It isn't because you're working to get to the point where you can do it. Right. But people are getting frustrated because it just sits and, and that's like that's a concern that I heard from Drake side road residents four years ago and, yeah. and now this year you know there was a number of I've had to learn some patience being in this position yeah and that I see all these things that need to get done that we talk about in the fiscal plan and I see there's only there's so many hours in the day there's a certain construction season there's a limit to what she and I can physically manage and do yeah. Um, and uh, so I think you know we've we've made a great stride this summer, in that Drake Side Road, the yeah. bridge abutments are gone. That traffic hazard is no more, and that's a beautiful road to travel now. Um, you've got uh, you know the, the Lafayette Road; it will be done in the spring. The, the remaining small distance of it, but you know we work with Aquarium, we get the water replaced. So I think we've made. You're making progress. We've made no huge, question. We're making huge progress. But when you look at what we've gotten done in a year, yeah. and you know, Ice Pond Dam, we're going to start that uh, December one. We're using some of the granite from Drake Side Road. So I mean, we're nipping, we're prioritizing these projects, and we're counting them down. And we're we're doing them. I think it's good that you bring it up because then it allows us to say it again. They are not forgotten. Right. They are still in the works. Well. The question to me was, why did they pave Watson's Lane and they haven't touched Ann's Lane? And I said, because I, I, I think it's because PVC of the utilities, okay. mm -hmm. and they, they're going to have to dig it up. And why pave it if you're going to dig it up? You might as well get exactly the bottom done right first. And they said, well, Watson's Lane's got sewer in it, but they didn't dig that up. But it was done a lot later than Ann's Lane was. It's also PVC. Right. So right. it didn't so need not, any... Right. Exactly. Underground work, all it needed was the surface. Right. 
So that was the, the justification, and I thought that's what it was. Yep. But, you know, the guy on the ends lane says, how come? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah. I, I could answer it, but, but I'd rather you answer it because you're dealing with it. I'm not. Yep. I just see it sit there, and I sputter every time I go over it because it's terrible yep. in a truck. It's probably terrible in a car, but it's worse in a truck. <laughs> Anything? Especially when you're buying the pieces. Yeah. Anything else, Mike? That's it. Okay. Um, Danielle, did you have a question? No, you no. looked as if you were going to ask a question. <laughs> no, nothing for me. Um, Sonny, I'm going to I'm going to ask if anybody else has a first round because you've already spoken once. Uh, Tim. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, Chris. <laughs> Hi. I want to try with the easy ones first, and then we're going to get to the not so easy ones. Okay. <laughs> You mentioned uh, DOD permitting earlier. What is that? No, I hope not DOD. Yeah, I think it was like Department of Defense. That's exactly what I thought when I heard it. I heard, I heard you say DOD permitting. Uh, well, DOT. DOT, Department DOT permitting. Okay, thank you. I'm like, what are we doing now? <laughs> that, was, uh, that was close. And late. I'm getting old. My eyes, are, my eyes are going, and now my ears are going. Perhaps it was all me. I don't know. No, okay. I told you I'd go with the easy one first. <laughs> yeah. um, the uh, so, well, yeah, I forgot what the police. I forgot what the police call it, but I still call it the fence, the Ocean Boulevard fence. Mm -hmm. uh, your department has some uh, hands in installing and uninstalling and storing that. Is that true? You mean uh, the, the, like the crowd control fence yeah. was put up this summer? Um, actually, yeah, <coughs> they. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we, yeah, I think we did help install, but I know that they've been fairly good about uh, when they picked it up uh, just before the uh, seafood festival. They have they have their own trailer for it. Uh, it's not stored in my yard; it must be stored in their yard. Um, the amount of assistance they asked for it was very minimal. Okay, if anything, it was probably just a backhoe with some forks on it to lift up sections. But no, they're very self-sufficient on that. Thank you. I told you that would be an easy one. Yeah. Um, I was going over all these various lines and came up with a couple that just kind of stuck out at me, and I hope you'd speak briefly on them. Um, sewer line maintenance is up 17.65%. You want to speak to that very briefly, please? Uh, we still want to get Ann's Lane done. We have Lock Road that needs to be... Uh, all that sewer needs to be replaced. It's all clay. Thank you. The uh, vehicle maintenance um, in the detail section, it's still labeled parenthetically as a new account. I think that's a, a remnant from last year. It's from no longer a new year. account. Yep. You could remove that parentheses. Sure. Um, it's good. Uh, Part-time wages on the transfer station, though. Yep. Um, up 25.68%. I'll take that. Yep. We never, we used to have a part-time uh, person to work the transfer station. Um, they left. Um, we ceased that. We actually hired the person back, uh, James, James Hafey. He's our uh, staff engineer. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't uh, that he was uh, lacking in his work profession. After that, the decision was made by me after a number of issues at the um, transfer station to staff the weekend with only persons qualified, if you will, to do the work internally. Mm -hmm. uh, those possessing a solid waste license uh, and sticking with the contract, giving the, uh, the part-time work to the Teamsters first. So the reason that line is up is because you didn't have a part-time person there last year right. and you're getting back the guy you had a couple of years ago. Well, he's back, but because he's not a Teamster, I'm not putting him on the transfer station on the weekend. Plus, there'd be no cost savings because now that he's a town employee full-time with benefits. Oh, I see. It would so be he's not a part-time. No. Part -time. Okay, right. so that's a different topic. That's correct. Right. So I'm not clear as to why the part-time is up 26%, roughly. All the other, yeah, the other increase was that I stopped paying $11 and I'm paying 14 for my part-timers, which is actually equal to what the starting salary is for either SEA or a Teamster. 
You know, I thought I saw that discussion of the selectmen, um, and I thought eleven dollars was a bit low. I heard the comment that McDonald's is paying fifteen dollars an hour. Four hundred one's dishwasher got nineteen dollars an hour this summer. But that up to ten dollars an hour. So that's a far cry from the fifteen I was hearing at the selectmen's meeting. So uh, eleven eleven dollars an hour seems more reasonable than it did prior to uh, season. When you're comparing it to McDonald's at fifteen dollars an hour, eleven dollars an hour is like, well, going to fourteen isn't going to help us, right? Mm. But if we're going to compare it, it to McDonald's it at ten dollars an hour, eleven dollars an hour seems more competitive than to, than fourteen versus fifteen dollars an hour. It, d it did for us. It worked. So I'm like, you know, so this is all this is about is just that. Um, Eleven to fourteen dollar an hour is mm -hmm. that entire line. Okay. Is that right? Yes. yes. <coughs> the wastewater hauling we've already established. We need to reduce that, right? So yep. Uh, I'll get back to that a little bit later. Groundwater monitoring. You you already spoke about that. It's up five hundred and fifty percent. I just want a very brief answer as to why. PFOAs yeah. without acronyms. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I wish I knew what PF always stands for, but anyhow. Um, no, the, the, the same situation, or to be proactive about the, the same situation that uh, came out of the Coakley landfill and or that Merrimack and their water distribution system is having to deal with, mm -hmm. um, if you will, the chemicals used in the manufacturing industry leaching into the water and or leaching out of landfills. So the recent increased sensitivity about PFCs is what's driving this line? No, PFCs are polyphenol. Yeah, that's what's coming, that's what's allegedly coming out of coke, right? But we're dealing with, and we've been asked by the state to test for PFOAs. Okay. Which is <laughs> similar to PFCs. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's part of the process. I, I saw the list and there's like 31 variations of that one acronym or chemical. Right, something to do with creating and disposing of plastic, right? Right. Yeah. And so that, that increased level of sensitivity relative to the uh, PFC plumes mm -hmm. is what's driving this 550% increase, is right. that correct? And we have a directive from the uh, DES, Department of Environmental Services, to, state. To, ta to test for those okay. under our permitted process of closing the landfill. Oh, okay. I wonder if they're doing the same thing to Copley Landfill. Are they doing? They sent the same letter to everybody who has a landfill that is closed. Okay. So everybody's happy. And, and you, would, you would attribute this to the uh, political noise about the PFC plume. I think it's the state's uh, response to get as much information and a handle on it, so that we can have a rational discussion on it. Okay. Um, you have vehicle maintenance. You made comment about it being too low. As a quote, entertain a discussion on increasing that, correct? For the solid waste vehicles, yes. Yeah, waste collection. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And also I note that in uh, you have this replacement equipment thing here going on as well, right? It's 60000 which is actually going to be paid for out of the 2017 surplus. I'm using the term surplus because it's less letters for me to write. But that actually means unassigned fund balance. Yep. Right? Assigned fund balance. So don't want anybody in the board of selectmen get upset at me. <laughs> Just using common language here. Yep. So that sixty thousand dollars you're saying, you know, sort of, you know, get rid of that because it's already been decided to use the uh, surplus from this year's budget, right? Correct. Okay. But yet the vehicle maintenance is too low. Yes. Now, when you say too low, how low is it? It's half of what we really need. So you need 50% more, is what you're saying? Yeah. So you if need... If it were 90, I'd be in a better position to make it through next year. Well, you're... you're uh, first of all, your, your budget is, uh, from last year, is... Uh, 49.6, we'll call it 50, just for discussion, okay? Right. 
We spent 83. And you prior already, you've already, as of September, it's been over 83,000. Right. So you're already over that on that yep. subline item. Nothing, yep. nothing illegal about that, so no one get excited. But uh, it is a growing management problem, right? Yes. Collection of trash is a management problem. So when you say go from 50 to 90, you're actually saying nearly, nearly doubling it, actually. Mm -hmm. right? Yes. And what is that going? What are you going to plan on doing with that money in terms of maintenance? Uh, are there, are there can, in your vision, do you have repairs that need to be done? It's no, it's repairs. it's it's literally um, EGRs. Each one of the vehicles has. They're all having the same problems. One of the things is, uh, and the reason why we wanted to replace it is, uh, Mike can probably be more prolific on this discussion than I. But there's a reburn for, uh, for the diesel fumes. Exhaust mm -hmm. gas regeneration. Right. EGR. Some of the newer vehicles use a fluid that mixes with the yeah. gas to yeah. reburn it. And it's injected into it. And it it's injected. It. These three vehicles don't. Yeah. But what they do rely on is a super hot uh, exhaust system to literally reignite those fumes because they stop and go 50, 100 feet, 50, 100 feet, 50, 100 feet. They never get up to really that temperature. Mm -hmm. They clog and they have to be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. The last three have been rebuilt 13,000 apiece. Is there a possibility of retrofitting them so the new design? With a sledgehammer. They got so much money in those trucks. They can't afford to do that. Well, the trucks are probably already exceeded their half-life, right? I would say so. So the question is whether you plan on extending their life or, or not, basically, right? I mean, you're not, no point in putting in a lot of repairs on you know, we don't, we that we don't these, see is going to live another year or two. We bought these vehicles that are for $160,000 a piece, and, the, and the, we've had them now for five or six years. I'll go back and look at it, but I'm, I think we've rebought the vehicles again. And, and if, the, if we go another three years with them, we're going to buy them again. Right. If I had my, if it was the vehicle parked in my driveway, I'd have turned the keys in on it all already. Yeah, we're talking about it's three, not, three uh, vehicles, right? But it's three vehicles, right? So I mean, it may make sense to like start replacing the worst one one year, and then the worst one the next year, and until you get. That's what was. Well, maybe not every year, but maybe every right. other year or something. That's other what was in the Warren article. article. Right, was to replace one per year. Uh -huh. And it was in our CIP, the fiscal plan that you asked for, one per year going forward. And what's the status with that uh, uh, Given all the financial requests being made this year, that current Warren article is dead. Uh -huh. It will not be coming forward. I, I will yield to your question. Oh, oh yeah, it's related to what you're sure. talking about. What is the Warren article that you're referring to? It was the vehicle replacement Warren article. My understanding, am I correct, Fred? It's, it's, it's passed over. They have passed over. over. Okay. <laughs> vehicle purchases yes. for 522? Right. Yeah, we actually agreed last night to have Plazic and Sanderson help us out. Okay. And we included that warrant article in we threw that in with the bonds just because it was oh. over half a million okay so it hasn't been so it's not totally dead yeah no we're okay. just gonna yeah. okay. sort of throw that into the mix for okay. the financial just, planning right. just yeah. to further educate me on the vehicle maintenance which mm -hmm. is the topic at hand thank you for that by the way very helpful thank you uh 5.2 million is that what i heard it was it's 522 thousand. Five hundred and assuming you got that 522 thousand. What, what would you be using? What would you be using it for relative to the articulating arm trucks? We were going to replace one sidearm packer truck. Uh -huh. We were going to replace one of the oldest dump trucks, the okay. six-wheel dump trucks. We were going to buy a yard horse, a used yard horse for the transfer station. Okay. So if that warrant article is passed, then you're able to buy one of those uh, one. replacement trucks. Right. Um, then your likelihood of having increased vehicle maintenance is not going to be as high as you currently perceive it to be, right? If it doesn't pass, it's going to be even higher, isn't it? Correct. So 
so they're kind of interplay going on here. But between. It's one of those cases where you you know you have, you have to plan for one or the other, huh, or huh. literally both at the same time. I mean, if it does pass, what are you going to do with the? Uh, I would trade it in. You're going to trade it in. Okay. But understand the lead time to get one is. It took all the, the two new dump six wheel dump trucks that we got two years ago. Took a full year almost to get here. From the time you voted mm -hmm. to the time the purchase order was filled out, they started fabricating them till they got delivered. Heck, it snowed last year before. <laughs> we had the last snowstorm of the year. Then they delivered the trucks. So these March. these new trucks they're going to have a, the new variation on regurgitating the exhaust? Well, we'd, we'd go back, we'd, we'd join the rest of the world and use the, buy the fuel additive. Would have been a lot cheaper. Urethra, right? Urea. Urea. <laughs> that sounds like something that goes through our pipes. Doesn't it? <laughs> DEF is what they call it. That's the acronym. Diesel exhaust. Well, I'm not sure, Chris, exactly how, how, how I should address that. Maybe I'll just pause on that and let you give another... Uh, Point of view a little bit later on, okay? But I am open to to doing something with that. Um, I think I have some more easier ones here for you. Though. Let's see, under wastewater treatment plant, we got the part time wages up 27%. Mm -hmm. Speak briefly. Again, 11 Again, just 14. A pay raise. <clears throat> 83 pay raise. 83.33% on stone ice. Uh, hired equipment for the winter rental. That is, in fact, something that should be relabeled, I think, you know, like uh, winter contract plowing or something like that. It could be retitled. Yeah. So that's just a suggestion. Mm -hmm. Told you it'd be easy. Uh, <laughs> building maintenance up. Is it building maintenance? Yeah. Is it? No, that's gasoline, I'm sorry. Electric, you already addressed that, right? Yep. Um, did you bring up a, a question that was emailed to everybody, I guess, but primarily to you? Was that raised? I didn't hear. No. Okay. Chris, uh, we received an email from uh, Mike Pierce, which I believe he was CC'd mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. uh, he asked a question about a union contract or something like that. Right. Um, I partially did address it when addressing the overtime in the transfer station, but I do have a response. Um, okay. For everybody's uh, Would you application. email Matt, re reply to the email, reply all with that response? And you're happy to read as much of it as you want to, but I would uh, like to see electronically okay. as well from my All right. Okay. Um, Could you read the question, please, first? The question was, why um, don't we still use a part-time person to be the manager of the transfer station on the weekends um, because it would result in a uh, from Mr. Pierce's uh, assertions it would re definitely result in a, a decrease in, in salaries and thus benefit to the budget so my reasons were um, uh, it was my decision to make all work and working conditions within the department as safe as possible to protect the employees and the residents who visit the transfer station. The transfer station is a work area that has trip and fall hazards that are best minimized by staffing the station with personnel who are acutely aware of the situation. Um, a huge por portion of our residential waste, at least the delivered portion, comes in during the weekend. It's the highest risk time we have. I made a decision as the director not to staff it with someone who is not a full-time employee uh, of the transfer station, at least most of the time. Um, the way it works is uh, within the union agreements is if you're the head of the transfer station, you're the transfer station coordinator, where you get you, you have the first cut, if you will, or first try at working the weekend shifts. The reason why we had had a part-time person in the past is Mark Richardson, as the current coordinator, had had enough of working every single weekend. Um, after Jim Hafey stepped away as the weekend coordinator, um, Frank Swift, Teresa McGinnis, uh, Toby Spainhauer all elected to step up to the plate as Teamsters and share in that that work. 
because they're all all three of them are more acutely trained and aware of what needed to be done. My second reason for staffing it the way we have is that each week the state of waste disposal and recycling changes and the, my decision was to staff the station with personnel trained to identify hazardous waste or other potential substances which would cause loss or injury to the town. Um, we've had uh, wood pellets. Oh, they went out a week ago, thrown into the transfer station. I drive into the station, the trailer's on fire because they've been pushed forward. It's those kind of um, risks that are um, inherent with transfer station operations. And the reason I feel, and I put down that, I understand that the focus of the budget committee is to examine our budget and seek possible cost savings for the taxpayer. This position is one where I believe that the taxpayer is best served by staffing the transfer station with the best trained staff as possible. That's the decision I made and why I made it. <clears throat> I'm looking at Mike's email now. I believe that the question he was asking, it's clear, it's clear he's asking uh, where in the union contract uh, it, it specifies. As you, you said last year to his question, yep. when he was on the budget committee, he asked this question, and your response was the union contract requires it. And according to his email, he's been looking where in the contract he hasn't been able to find it, and he was asking for you to direct him as to where to find it. The only thing and, that in uh, the contract that speaks to it would be Article 10, Section 1, Overtime will be offered on a rotating base within the job classification. Overtime will be distributed as evenly as possible um, because of those, partially because of that language. I also went with the and, current staffing methodology. And in Pierce's email, um, he writes that he did find in the recognition clause right. words that, in effect, say the part time weekend position is not a union position. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Apparently, he's objecting to the fact that you're using union personnel to fill a non-union position as defined by the union contract. So I wanted to be clear that his email was properly represented to this body. You've given your answer. I'm not going to argue about it. I just wanted it to be clear as to what was going on because not the whole world of TV land got this email. Correct. But everyone in this body did get the email. We can enjoy it. And I'll enjoy seeing your email response so that we can look at it more clearly. Okay. And now move on to Sue. Other interesting stuff. Uh, the sidewalk repair, Jennifer. Um, an annual discussion that's become between you and I, right? Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we talked about, uh, first of all, is the sidewalk repairs in the budget that we did this year and the ones proposed for next year from the budget, is that making those sidewalks ADA compliant? That is what we are working on, yes. So the, every sidewalk you touch becomes ADA compliant? That's what I like to do. Is that what you're actually doing? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, like I like to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to hear it. It doesn't make sense to do it twice. We talk about that all the right, time. Right, right. I'm going to touch it. Let's touch it and make it right. Exactly. I get less done, but I get it done right. The first time. Mm -hmm. Measure twice, cut once. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, we talk about the the dream of how much is it gonna, how long is it going to take to complete the entire town's existing sidewalks, given what we're doing presently. The I mean, answer was previously, well, I don't know. Correct. And we thought, well, can we have a plan as to how and when we can get there? And I'm sure you guys have been way too busy to address it, but I wanted to know I haven't forgotten it. Okay. All right. Uh, pretty easy, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> The Lafayette uh, Road uh, resurfacing and underground utility stuff. Um, I got an I got an email from another constituent uh, that actually reads these contracts, I guess. <laughs> and, and that constituent claims that there is a uh, in the contract a one thousand dollar per day fine for going beyond the completion date in that contract. Mm -hmm. Is that a true statement? That is the wording in that the contract. That is a true statement, okay. So when you went and asked for a suspension of the contract until next spring, that basically suspended that clause as well, right? Correct. But it wasn't mentioned that we were sacrificing a $1,000 a day fine, which would have been revenue to the town. I did not mention, I think, my exact words, if you go back and look at the meeting, 
was that so that the contractor would not be penalized due to the conditions that he ran into. So right. I would equate a thousand dollar fine of penalizing a, a contract. Sure. That's a penalty. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And now the public knows it was a one thousand dollar day. I assume per day or per work day. Fine. Per work day. Okay, great. Uh, so I've done my job to that constituent who wanted me to ask that question. Okay, so now what I've got to deal with is this: we've got a reduction of fifty-one thousand six hundred and sixty-four dollars on. Uh, and then another sixty thousand on vehicle maintenance because uh, it's going to be funded by the twenty seventeen new replacement equipment replacement, not vehicle maintenance. <laughs> new equipment, sorry. Yeah, thank you. So we got reductions on the table of one hundred eleven thousand six hundred sixty four dollars, which we're going to be considering. And so one could say, well, that gives us a little wiggle room in terms of this this need for you know potentially more maintenance. So. I've given you a few moments to think about that a little further. You want to have something more to say about how we could be advantaged by spending, putting more money in that subline item? I think I was clear that I said double it from essentially 45 to 90 would be yeah. what I would like you to do. So take back part of the 60 credit and the 50 credit and add 45 to that one. Well, that's what I was looking at for the pitch, but I'm trying to figure out how can I get a sense of ROI on doing that. Return on investment. Oh. Your only return on investment is with that particular thing is averting loss uh, or averting risk. Um, we pick up trash. Um, something that can be very putrid, can, you know, uh, something that can uh, detrimentally, I think, affect the residents and the businesses and the beach area. So it's something we are obligated to do. So I, I can't really considered a return on investment. My car, I need to get to work every day. I don't really consider that a return on investment. It's my duty to get here safely. Um, so, um, just like wastewater, I don't think there's a return on investment in that, at least a not uh, acutely definable one. But it is, uh, you know, like Ben Moore said one time, you handle everything from Shinola to snow. And that's my job. Last uh, winter, um, would you consider that a normal winter in terms of? Uh, more normal, yes. It was a normal winter. Right. Okay. So we had a normal winter. We didn't have any great emergencies occur throughout the year. Right? Everything was more or less normal. They were all Sundays. They were all days our staff had off. All the snow. All the snow. All the snow. Yeah. Weekend work. It was all weekend work. So it was a normal year, which is pretty much all we really could plan for as a normal year with a little... Correct. Yeah, okay. The winter 14, 15, you, you really can't plan on. Right, exactly. Yeah. 120 inches of snow. And so take it. having a normal year, you had budgeted approximately $50,000 on the vehicle maintenance. You spent slightly over $83,000. No, no, Tim. No, that was actually, that's 2016. No, they, they've spent 58. 58, 8, Thank you. The actual is September 30th, but in 2016, the full was 83. That's correct. Yeah, but that's vehicle. Please don't equate vehicle maintenance for s trash collection. Has anything to do with snow? Oh, I understand. No, 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 I'm, not, I'm not suggesting. That. Let me finish. <laughs> you got, you got that. You overspent that subline item. You got that money from somewhere else in your budget. Yeah. Uh, which was not under stress. And. Apparently, one of the places that was not in distress was your snow removal budget because of it being a normal winter. Yeah. So that's how I see the relationship there. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, at the moment, I'm not convinced that we should uh, do anything there because there's obviously room elsewhere in the budget should the need arise for the maintenance. If the, if the maintenance occurs, you're going to do it, period, anyway. Uh, and you'll find somewhere else because you've done that historically and there's no real issue there. And I'm going to shut up and I'll wait to help someone make the amendment that reduces this budget as we had previously discussed. Thank you very much. Tim. Thank you. Um, does anybody else, Brian, did you have any questions? Everybody's, everybody's had an opportunity to ask on the first. Okay, so Sonny, go ahead. Oh. Yeah. I'm curious. <coughs> have you mapped all the roads in the town to know the condition of yeah, we have a uh, very lengthy spreadsheet with all the roads. Uh, 
that affect roads like High Street and Winnicott are actually broken up in subsections because they all can't be done at the same time. With that, we've correlated the um, condition of the, the sewer lines, or at least identified where we have uh, major leaks, where we have uh, clay, where our oldest clay is. I've got something like um, 8,000 linear feet of, you know, just six inch clay alone, and then eight inch clay and 10 inch, it just goes on and on. Um, so yeah, we, we have that and we do do a priority system. Um, we can actually queue up the data to tell us what are the 10 worst streets paving wise, and then what are the 10 worst streets paving wise with clay under them. Um, it's about the same 10 to 12 streets show up in the same two queries, just in a slightly different order. Yeah. Kind of my reason is, you know, World War II, the, the reason the European infrastructure is brand new is because it was destroyed during World War II. You know, we were with the original from the 30s and the 40s. And it seemed to me when you go into a road, you should you know, put the utilities on the ground and, you know. Do it right, once right. But something else you should also realize, Europe spends on their, on their gross national product somewhere between 11 and 13 percent on strictly infrastructure improvements. The United States typically, four to five. Yeah. Um, so well, they, they, I think it's because they're denser in population, they, they're more acutely aware of the, the need to do some of those things. They don't spend any money on defense. I'm not going there at one day. The <laughs> question I have is on the recycling. Waste management has a cost of living increase. Did you make that statement? For the haul? Yeah. You pay $90 a ton. To we pay, they have a cost of living increase on refuse that we throw away. Yeah. And they have and a cost of living increase. Is, no, recycling is cost this town yeah, zero dollars thought, per yeah. ton. It does cost us about one hundred and twenty-five dollars a ton to transport it, oh. but not to dispose of it. Oh, right so now, they take it at zero dollars. Right. That's what I thought. Okay. Yeah. All right. So some things are working well. The other issue that's been raised is some businesses you pick up the trash, others you don't. The town should have a policy, you know, but that's a big item in your budget. It, it, it is something that is always under discussion and always open for review. I know the single businesses, for instance, if you're along Ocean Boulevard and you front Ocean Boulevard, um, you get carts. But if you're a business on, like Foss, no, I don't pick up Foss's trash. Um, I don't pick up. If I have to go on private property on a business, I don't I don't pick it up. In other words, if they don't have street front. Yeah. So not every business gets Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, right. It's not your decision. It's the town's to set a uniform policy. Yeah. And you mentioned the street light. Street, light, street lights is owned by Unitil. So the town pays a flat fee for it each year, and I'm sure it goes up every year. Anything else, uh, Sonny? Mm -hmm. You all, you all set now. Okay, thank you. As Jim. much as you can. Wait, I have, I have one thing I want to ask you. You said something about um, the under the the five hundred five hundred and two uh, five hundred and two uh, thousand. Yeah, for the um, vehicle. 522 for vehicle replacement yeah. right. was a Warren article. And you mentioned something about a low boy. Or something like it's that. It's called a yard horse. Yard horse, okay. Now, I, I remember, I remember, well, whatever. Okay, low boy, yard yeah. horse, whatever. Uh, this, that's the truck. You're going to buy a used one. Isn't that the truck? I thought, that we talked about this last year because there was a fire and, and, and it doesn't have the hydraulics or something on it. I thought you, I, wasn't there a Warren article or, I know we talked about this. It was, because how many points it failed by? Oh, and it failed. I guess how many? One. 
Was it one? Was it was that the one? <laughs> one? Okay, okay. So that's the same truck you're still trying to replace. Yeah. Okay. Yes. I thought I just wanted to just but try that to was that it. it was for safety, you're hundred percent right. I it thought that you the, already got it. Example. And that's why I was wondering why we're talking about it again. Okay, thank you very much. That's all I need to do. And yes, Sonny actually reminded me of a topic that just struck my mind yesterday. I was I was putting out my trash. And I got this big blue barrel. And I got a little bag in there. And for a whole month. And you know what it was? Banana peels, coffee rinds. But you had it in recycle? No, blue barrel. Green barrel recycle. <laughs> I thought you knew that. It's just chicken. But it struck me when I was going out there, you know, what a waste of resources that was, you know. It also struck me that, you know, much of that is would be good mulching material, wouldn't it? And then it further struck me that at the end of my street, which is where Ocean Walk lives, mm -hmm. I noticed they got like 10, 12 barrels along, along the, uh, the side of the road. And I imagine most of their refuse is, in fact, mulchable. Mm -hmm. Have we ever looked at using uh, at mulching this rather than than putting it in a landfill? Composting is they're actually rewriting food composting regs at DES right now. And, so. and two high school kids at Winnicott are actually leaders in that field. Two years ago, two the seniors did a mm -hmm. they did a pilot composting program through the school. So it, no, it definitely has been looked at. Okay, so it will just like you know. Um, I've looked at the cost of getting rid of trash. With the tipping fee that we pay, yeah, it's $156 a ton. If you take all the cost in, into consideration, if you look at the transfer station or look at recycling, that's still $124 a ton because I picked up the cost of the trucks, the maintenance of the trucks, the fuel, the driver. The well, transportation we're not going to be able to get out of there, in my opinion. So the, but the question we, is the tipping fee. If we fees, go really, with composting waste, that will be proportionally seventy-five to hundred dollars a ton. It's going to be very manual, very labor intensive, and very there again. I'll be asking you for trucks to haul compost. Mm -hmm. But you, the, the, I mean, you can actually sell it once it's composted to go back. Yeah. So that actually could be a source of revenue. Right. So there is potential there in the future. There is potential. Okay. I'd be happy if I'm not never really looking. To, I'd be happy if I could just get rid of it for free. To be honest, when the program right, right. starts, well, so I, that then it would reduce or offset yeah. waste disposal fees. Because we're that looking at replacing the trucks benefit. and how we do right. our, our refuse yeah. disposal. Right. I think it's important to consider that as a. Uh, a viable option to be looking at, and, and that's why I wanted to raise it. Definitely being I didn't know about the Winnicott kind of people. They're doing something. Their project came out uh, successful. Did it? it was successful, but it's it's on very on a very much a small scale. Of course, it's a and then they pilot. found somebody who would want to come and take the the swill, if you will, or the the material. Yeah. And I think it went to a pig farm. But yeah, it definitely got sure. reused. Yes, I'll yield to you. Then. Thank you. Right now. Right now. Thank you. Immediately. <laughs> You're talking compost piles. I happen to have put it in my backyard of compost when I first moved to Hampton mm -hmm. and do a lot of the stuff of what you were just saying you were taking out in your ash barrel, which made me think of something. Is there a possibility of some place in Hampton or near the dump or something where the people, if they wanted to, could bring their compost and create a town compost pile that you wouldn't have to take it anywhere? And then after a while, the compost becomes five or ten years becomes usable usable, and also you get paid for it. You could sell it to farmland and all that. We, is we, is we part of that a potential? Technically still do. I mean, um, uh, you can put anything you want in my leaf pile. <laughs> and I'll just, you know, leaf between the, that is the, the leaf. Compost pile. The leaf. You can the, put the, the leaf, leaf waste. Pile. Yeah, but you only picks up leaves like twice a year. <laughs> you can, no, you the, ever go to the, the dump and turn we get a whole pile. But just the sheer shelf. volume. The leaves are very dry. They mm -hmm. take a if you can mix them with a good portion of grass and keep it turning, and if you want to bring any compost, if you will, or the coffee grinds, the whatever, throw it right in. We just turn it right in. Now this year we got 
we, we restructured the contract, we asked for 160 cubic yards of compost material. This is the first summer where we've actually had, for the whole summer, a pile of compost material for the residents to use or to take. There's still some there. Cool. The rest of it they took at no charge to us. So that, you know, so we did get a cost benefit from it. Um, so yeah, I mean, so we have one of the biggest components of a composting portion, although if I do get food grade waste in, it's gonna to have to be turned on a much more frequent, frequent basis. So to keep down the vectors. So we yeah. couldn't do it until you get the agreement that you'd be turning it over to prevent what you just said. And the state. You wouldn't want me to come down and drunk, put my eggshells and my coffee grinds in your leaf pile. Be honest you know. with you, if we did, I'd set an area aside where you could, and then I'd pick it up on a daily basis and mix it with the compost so That's that it idea. was deeply buried. Years ago, we had, uh, I think, an ineffective recycling, with those little tiny green bins we used mm -hmm. to have, yep. which was a very ineffective uh, recycling program that this town had. And the selectmen had a recycling committee, which I believe still exists, um, which really uh, spurned this whole new initiative, I think, uh, along with others that were selectmen on the board of selectmen that were uh, following through with their recommendations. But I think if the recycling committee still does exist, it would be great if they could pick up this and try to come up with some sort of <laughs> similar program that they did with the recycling stuff. I mean, we can save, uh, I think, some real money. Uh, in terms of tipping fees. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just wanted to lay that thought out there as a general idea, okay? And once again, I'll endeavor to shut up. Thank you, Tim. Um, <laughs> at this point, so we have a motion and we have a second. The motion was originally made by Danielle, the second by Tim Jones. Um, at this point, we're going to vote for this, the bottom line. You made the motion for, and then we will make amendments. Okay, so uh, we'll finish discussion. Yes. Could we repeat the sum, please? Danielle. Danielle, please. Uh, <clears throat> Five million four hundred sixty-five thousand eight hundred thirteen dollars. Okay. Thank you. All those in favor, raise your hands. Unanimous. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. The uh, DPW director has given us uh, indications that we should that we have two subline items that need to be reduced. Yes. They total one hundred and eleven thousand six hundred sixty-four dollars. Okay. Um, and I'm sure Daniel would like to make that amendment to reduce that. Right, Daniel. Yes. And I'll, I'm sure that I would second it if nobody else will. Okay. So make the motion, Danielle, and clearly state the number for Barbara. And, be, and you, you double-check your math, correct? Okay, yeah. So um, I'd like to make a motion to reduce by $111,664, which makes the bottom line number $5,354. Sorry, $5,354,149. Okay, you have that number, Barbara? Okay, and we have a second by Tim. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Chris. Thank before you, Jeff. you leave, before you leave, I just want to um, I want to mention that uh, I know that you have a, a Warren article with the wastewater treatment plant. We've all been given one of these books. Uh, most of us, maybe all of us, have read every single page. Um, and I heard you talking at the selectmen's meeting about. Um, allowing the selectmen and also the budget committee people if they would like to come down to the, um, the wastewater Good treatment time. plant to take a quick tour. Yeah. And, uh, and so I, I just wonder if we could leave it as I don't, I, I don't, I'm not going to try to organize that we go in groups or whatever. I would like to think that perhaps uh, Tim. No, I have a question. Uh, th that's a very technical and lengthy document. So I hired an independent consultant. Would my independent consultant be allowed to come with me on that tour? Uh, absolutely. Thank you. No problem. The um, the yes, you can bring Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> but not here. <laughs> but in any case, so if anybody wants to go you phrase it, Jennifer. <laughs> no, 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 no. down there, um, call you know, call another member if you think you might want to go together with another person. Um, I might want to ask Bob Ladd. I might want to ask Tim Jones. Who knows? But uh, perhaps we could, you know, go as, as little groups. I'm going to leave that up to the individual. And then the other thing I wanted to just mention before you leave is that um, on our schedule um, for our future meetings, we may, um, I've got, with that particular article, it's pretty lengthy. And we may want, as a committee, and we can decide this once we get to other business, uh, we may want to have you come in and make a pre, you know, a big presentation like you did with the selectmen, yep. um, and do the pictures, the uh, slide, whatever, all of that that you did. Um, We'd be glad to. And, and what we'd probably do is, I've got four snow days built into the schedule. Mm -hmm. We'd pick one of those days. I'd let you know well in advance, okay? okay? And so that's just something I wanted to mention for you, okay? okay. No problem. Yeah, because that, that is a very big, big uh, issue, and I'm looking forward to talking about that and, and you know getting into it and making sure, um, as I had suggested when I talked to the town manager a couple of weeks ago, um, that I think that you need to um, perhaps make a video that you can put on to Channel 22 and keep looping it. Mm -hmm. Because back when uh, Bill Wren was the police chief and they were trying to replace that uh, cinder block <laughs> building down there at the beach, he made a video and he showed you know, what it looked like on the inside and the problems and the roof collapsing and different things. And if you had a video that was possibly able to capture this nightmare, okay, mm -hmm. uh, people would probably, uh, I think they need to see yeah. visually yeah. and realize the importance and the conditions, the working conditions, ventilation, corrosion, um, pumps, that, you know, things that just are frozen open or frozen shut. Um, it's an incredible, incredible thing, that, and, and we need to really get out there and make sure people understand what's going on here, what we're asking for. It's not something, it's not something that's, um, it, it's an absolute, absolute necessity mm -hmm. that we address this I agree. and address it very soon. Um, there are things that I don't even know if we can wait till very soon. There are some things in that book that need to be done now, today. Yep. There are safety issues, and I, I don't want to talk about this anymore because we'll be talking about it so much in the future, mm -hmm. but I don't want to see somebody get hurt. There's, there's a lot of that, too. Mm -hmm. Slippery floors and, mm -hmm. and things that are missing railings and, and open pits that people could fall into. There's just too many, too many things. So in any case... With uh, respect to touring the plant, yes, at any time that meets your respective... And, of course, works with your schedule as well. You just make right. that very clear that I can't do it today. I maybe right. can do it next week type of it's, thing. It's really going to be up to the two chief operators, Mike Doobie and, and Mike Carl. Mm -hmm. I do have to say, though, that there will be certain times, for instance, when we have uh, by cell flight delivery. Mm -hmm. It's a strong chemical. <laughs> um, the plant would be off limits to everybody during those particular times. Absolutely. I also have to warn you that... Um, for instance, if you go in the headworks, it will literally take your breath away. If you have an asthmatic condition, do not. Well, we'll bring you to the outside, but don't go inside. I would strongly suggest. Okay, that's so. that's very good. I know we don't want to talk about, but I just want to say one thing because just I went there yesterday, yeah. and I think I talked. My Carl said that you guys were planning on having a couple people from Channel Twenty Two yeah. mm -hmm. walk yeah. through there with a camera, yeah. but. And that's all well, and I think that'll be great having it on Channel 22. But for the budget committee, especially, and I think maybe later closer to town meeting, mm -hmm. if you could arrange certain days, because yeah. okay. when you actually go there and smell and the moisture and the ventilation, it's it's awful. Okay. okay. Yes, Bob. Uh, I, I wonder if you couldn't add to that video the flooding at the beach and put that on. Where you're going to have more articles concerning that. It's, it's a 
it, you know, if you show what's going on, the likelihood of response is probably those projects um, are more. I, I would agree with you, but I think they they may be uh, PowerPoint presentations that we put together and then and get the channel open to and have them. Um, It'd be painfully slow to say, well, here we are watching the tide come in. <laughs> you just have to go to yeah, the peaks right, right. Uh, and show the barrels floating yeah. up the street. Actually, Jay Diener took some fantastic pictures yep. of a king tide. I don't know whether it was a king tide The king tide contest. Uh, they those? just announced the winners, uh, I think, yesterday. And Hampton, I think, Hampton went all. I was just going to say, I think Hampton took four out of five. Yeah, and the pitches are pretty uh, significant if you look at them. Tim, you want to say something else? Yeah, I have to. Go I'm sorry. I don't want to. Many years ago, um, the selectmen, yes. none of them are presently selectmen, except one, uh, used to have uh, a meeting in which they paraded or campaigned for all of their favorite Warren articles. And they ceased that practice because it was increasingly perceived as a propagandist uh, move. People were not allowed an opportunity for equal time, would oppose them, etc. And so I wanted to just bring some sensitivity to this. I don't have any problem with you bringing facts out, but to actually use uh, public television as a campaigning vehicle, I think, is extremely problematic. I was so I just wanted to have some sensitivity introduced into that. Thank you. I, I was considering it as an educational tool, but enough said on that. Thank you, Tim. Um, I think that's all for tonight. Thank you very much for coming in. You're doing thank a great you job. Thank you very much. All thank of you. you. Yep. Um, thank you, Fred, and thank you, Christy, as well. Um, and, and happy Thanksgiving to all of you folks. Okay, so moving right along on our <laughs> yeah, <laughs> moving right along in our um, agenda, we have let me see review of available foreign articles. We don't have any yet. Um, the next thing on the list is the selectmen's update report. Regina, do you have anything? No, it to is. The minutes. Do, do you have oh, I'm minutes? sorry. I'm sorry. Minutes. 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 Ooh. Minutes from. Um, <coughs> approval of minutes from November 9th. I have them right here. I don't know if anybody else has them. Um, does anybody have any changes to the uh, November 9th minutes? I was only able to look at it at a cursory level, but I do have changes. Go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> since I was, unlike tonight, where Danielle's the motion maker, at that, that meeting I was the motion maker. Uh, and it says, Mr. Jones, motion to discussion of. Oh, well, I think we need to remove the word discussion of. I just motioned it. Uh, I didn't make a motion for a discussion of. Okay? okay, so. And that's true for every one of these. Uh, I motions. see that, yes. If you would, please, Barbara, make that change. So the simplest change is remove discussion of. Um, mm. And then there's one other one here that's a little bit more involved. Find it. Sorry, I'm not better prepared, but I'm actually easy to do this when I have an editable document that I can write on. You know, but I don't have that anymore, do I? Well. You only made one, two, three, four, five, six motions. Yeah, but it was only one comment. That's how efficient that was. Oh. <laughs> it's not in the motion itself. Well, I'll give you two minutes to find it. <laughs> and then we're going to have to move on, Tim. Oh, that's <laughs> not a factual change anyway. It's a choice of language. Yeah, it was a choice made by the motion maker. All right, easy now. Easy. <laughs> That's enough of that. Okay. Well, in any case, somewhere in here it says that uh, Mr. Jones moved uh, for the animal control. Moved for 
for the animal control. For the animal control budget. Yeah. Okay. Well, Mr. Jones explicitly did not move for animal control. As you recall, I moved, I moved for the legally defined pest control, locally known as animal control. Okay, well, that would be under the budget is called the annual control. But okay. the budget is not what gets into this report. The budget is not what goes to the DRA. What's in this report is pest control. What goes to the DRA is pest control. All right, that's actually number seven. I don't mean to be a pest about it, but that's the reality of it. Yeah, Tim, well, Tim, Tim you know what a pest that's, is. So. Okay, Tim, look at me. Uh, <laughs> no, no, really, this, just look at me. It's under number seven. It, it, it's called animal control, F, FY uh, 2018 budget proposal. Mr. Jones mentioned discussion of the proposal. Do you see which one I'm talking about? It's, it's on uh, page uh, 11. No, it isn't. No, there's no page. No, 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 page 5. Seven. Page 5 of 7. It's the bottom. So what? Yeah, it's titled 7, Animal Control FYI. Okay, how would it? How FY 2018 budget should? proposal. It should read Pest Control FY 2018 budget proposal. Okay, please and it should read Mr. Jones motioned. Pest control. Okay. FY 2018 pest. pest control budget in the amount of. Okay, thank you. Um, Barbara, please make that change. Okay, anything else? And I actually believe I specified the account number at the time, so. I don't want to. Because we had a discussion with uh, Virginia on that. Okay, hold on. Okay. Um, anything else, Tim? As I said, I only took a cursor read. That's what stood out to me, so. Thank you very much. Did you have a change, Sonny? No. Oh, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. then, now, no comments, please. We have a motion on the floor um, by, who made the motion? Nobody. Okay. Somebody want to make a motion? Danielle had. Or is thinking of it, actually. Danielle, would you like to make a motion? Sure, I'll to, make a motion. Thanks, Tim. To accept. Second. And Re Regina seconded it. Yeah. All those in favor of approving the minutes? Okay, all those not in favor? Sonny is no, not in I'm favor? Okay. Sonny is not in favor, and Brian, are you abstaining? Yes. Brian is abstaining. Hold on one second, please. Um, yeah, accepting these minutes um, with changes. As amended. The adjustments. With yeah. changes. Danielle made the motion. Regina seconded it. Um, everybody was in favor except for Sonny, who's not in favor, and Brian, who's abstaining. And Jones, who joined Brian. Oh, you're abstaining as well? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I told you, I only took a cursory read. Oh, okay. Oh. All right, so two abstentions. All right, now, Selectman's update report. Do you have anything to report to us, Regina? Um, no, the reason for the delay on the, like I stated before, the bonds specifically, but we did include that 522000 just because it was ha over half a million. Excellent. Until Excellent. we get... Mm -hmm. Plodznik and Sanderson, we're going to set up some type of agreed upon procedures where they can come in and look at, you know, capital improvement right. plan. Right. That was discussed at the last night's meeting, right? So we're going to try to get on that and have them help us out with Good. what we should be doing financially. Okay. Thank you very much. Anybody have any questions for Regina? Tim? Yeah, I have two. Uh, one, of course, is the question or the request for... Uh, consideration of us having a non-public uh, session with the legal department to get into the confidential details as to why their budget is being increased substantially this year. And I understand the answer is uh, no, but they're going to provide some background, but not all the background information in printed form. Is that, is that correct? Yes. When okay. Thank you. And the other question is, uh, I'm not necessarily directed to you because it was actually directed to the finance, but they work for you, so the to the top manager, so I think this is the only place for me to ask it, which is about the uh, the review of the truck of the funds, the various funds we have. Uh, I don't think you got an answer yet, but I think there was an implication because we asked for a gasoline diesel discussion on the same meeting that we discussed the trust or the fund yeah. discussion. So I think by implication that it's agreed to, but I think it would probably be best if it were confirmed. I'll double check with Christy. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. And what date is that going to be? Do you know? It was on. Uh, January 9th. No. I'm, I'm sorry. December. It was the last meeting in December, which is when we originally scheduled final review. Okay. Uh, December 19th. Sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. 
Okay, I'm just going to, well, I probably, yeah. So what we're looking for there was just uh, a listing of the funds and their, you know, their current balance as of, and, uh, and some preparation to discuss in more detail about uh, two funds in particular. One was the cable TV fund, and the other one was the, uh, the, fund, uh, the uh, police and fire details fund, which I would actually add the third one now at this point, which would be EMS because the two are interesting compared to the EMS and the police and detail. They're interesting comparison when you look at them. So uh, a, a detailed discussion on those three funds in particular. Um, and then, of course, a discussion on the gas and diesel as a separate exercise. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. Anybody else have a question for Regina? Seeing none, um, Bob, would you like to give a little report update on the village district? Little or big? Whatever you choose. Little. Whatever you choose. Okay. We're preparing our annual best in float float for the Christmas parade, and we brought in extremely talented architects, set designers, and musical people who will play on that float. And the second thing we're looking into, and it's highly uncertain how this will play out, is the possibility of creating a shuttle system between the beach and downtown seasonally to reduce the traffic flow at the beach, particularly for employees of the businesses at the beach. It may not be doable, but we're trying to see if it's possible. Thank you, Bob. Uh, yeah. Oops. I'm sorry, you have a question for Bob? Yeah. Uh, I noticed in today's post, you said there was Sylvia Lawson replacing John Lyon on the that's not, that's, not the, that's not the village district, so that's, Bob, do not answer that, please. I have a question. Okay. It, it, I hope it has nothing to do with, if it has something to do with the village district, ask Bob, please. You know I keep myself confined to the topic at hand, Mr. Chairman. Of course. of course I know you do, so go ahead, please. In your consideration for this uh, transportation that you were referring to, what are the parameters of the financing of such things that are under consideration? We have not reached a point where we can answer that. Part of the review of this process will obviously involve financing, who will pay for it, whether it's doable, whether it would be self-reliant and self-funding. None of these questions can be answered at this time. It's far too early in the process. Okay, so then nothing is off the table in terms of who might pay for it. So Nothing is on the table. Nothing is off the okay, table. So nothing we have on the not table. yet okay. built the table. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know why we're talking about it at all. Thank you very much, Bob. Well, you asked the question. Right. There's no table, talking. so why are we talking about it? <laughs> all right. Okay. Thank you very much, Bob. Um, we don't, Ginny's not here tonight, so we don't have a, So now we're going to go right into other business, and I've got a couple of things. Um, first of all, for the record, um, Barbara asked me to make it known to everyone that the uh, the minutes. I had originally requested that she provide the minutes five business days. No, five five days. Five days after we have our meeting. And the reason I requested that is because I asked the uh, the law. The, I asked the town, um, Mr. Gerard, attorney. Gerard. Attorney. Yeah. Um, I asked him, and he opened up his book, and he showed me the law where it says the law. Okay, but then Barbara, Barbara found that there was uh, additional information because several years ago um, there was a case made, and it's been changed to five business days legally. So I sent that uh, information to our town attorney, and in view of that, the the minutes are now due five business days after uh, our meeting. I just wanted to mention that. And then there was one other thing I wanted to ask Brian. Um, at some point, Brian, could you give us an update of where we are with the CIP? I know that you there was a meeting that was going to be coming up, and I know that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'll keep that on the burner for the maybe the next time we meet. Mm -hmm. um, and so. Does anybody have any uh, any new business or old business or any business that or other like business. other business that they'd like to discuss? Yeah, when you when the tour is scheduled, send an email around. Mm -hmm. so it's available. Okay.
okay, okay. Um, That's what, a good point. When you update that uh, calendar, would you would you send the updates out as well? Update the calendar. You're updating the calendar you for the, the, the funds. Oh yes, of course, yeah. Yeah. of course. Yeah. Well, that's that's. I'm glad you brought that up because actually, I wanted to, I wanted to bring that up as a an actual subject. I actually forgot right now. Um, I think that if you look at the schedule, we have four snow dates, yeah. and I think that we're going to need a uh, on December 19th. I have scheduled the SAU 90 and the non-petition money warrant articles. Um, I don't know if they, we, there's going to be enough time because there, uh, there are a bunch of them. And the SAU 90, to go through their budget, is probably going to take a minimum of an hour and a half. Um, depending on how many questions people have, it could be two hours. That doesn't leave us a lot of time to discuss all of those warrant articles. So I was thinking that they possibly, they might be ready, at least some of them, by December 5th. Oh, yeah, I would think that sometime soon. Yeah. Well, what is today? So we well, voted on some last night. Yeah, so, yeah. so we can tackle mean, those right now. Well, not, no, not right now because we don't have them. I know, I said theoretically. Oh, yeah, okay. but we did most, the only ones we really didn't do were the, any of the bonds, mm -hmm. the 522,000 right. and the... Uh, yeah, the controversial ones, yeah. And then obviously we haven't gotten the contracts yet and we don't know if any more are going to come in, but I think all the normal, the ones coming out of surplus, yeah. Um, yeah, I yeah mean, we, we could, could we could go, to probably go for those. Yeah, we could, and I think that we could, um, I think it would be a good idea if we consider um, December 5th, which I presently have down as a snow date, and if... Well, maybe we could put the funds in there as well, from the guests, and, and that way you have the SA you know, stand alone, is that what you were suggesting? No, 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 no. I'm just suggesting that we we do some of these Warren articles because there's going to there are so many of them that, that <coughs> still allows us on December 19th to do the SAU to finish up on the Warren articles. We still have two more snow days. If at that point we may decide to um, take one of those dates, like the second, depending on where we are, we'll have a pretty good idea by the time we get to December 19th. But we may decide to take January 4th, for instance and just have um, the DPW come in and talk about the wastewater treatment plant and give the same pres or similar presentation with the slides and the, um, that they did to the selectmen so that you know, we can really um, drill down into that. That's such a big project. And by then, perhaps many of us will have visited the uh, plant as well. So I'm proposing that, and we, can, we just need a consensus on this. Final that, budget review is what date, right? Yeah. Um, let's the deadline see. for petition warrant articles is the ninth of January, and then the final budget. Re yeah, it's January 9th. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you do those trusts in right. advance of that. Yes, that's going to be done on the nineteenth. Gasoline and diesel as well prior to that. Gas and diesel. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and also. So that's why I think the, the given SAU trust. ninety tends to be a big load in terms of time, mm -hmm. and these warrant articles that you're going to have in the, the initial load. Shouldn't be all that time consuming because it's really none of them controversial. Right. It might and be better to put the trust fund and the gasoline uh, and diesel in December 5 and let SAU 90 stand alone as it traditionally does. Okay, so for the fifth, what I'm going to, what we're going to do is we're going to do the um, available warrant articles, okay, whatever's available at that point. Mm -hmm. We'll also do the gas, diesel, and funds. And the Trust funds. Oh, so funds. Funds. Some of them not trust. That's true. Get rid of the word <laughs> trust. Okay, that'll be for the fifth. So what I'll do is I will notify um, Christina in the town manager's office. She can make this change. We have reserved that time and notify the um, Christy, for instance. Yeah. I'll send. I'll make sure that she's notified as well for the funds and the gas and diesel. We can talk about it on December 5th. So that's our plan for now. So that makes our next meeting December 5th. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, and what's that? 
Can you do a motion while I say happy Thanksgiving to everyone out oh, there? Wait, 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 wait. Um, do we need a motion or should we just do a consensus? I have a question at this time. Okay. But you have it is on it the 5th. Yeah. Okay. And we also have another meeting on the 7th, correct? That's true. And then the meeting after that will be on the 14th. That's true. And the meeting after that will be on the 19th. Yeah. Yes. I know. December is going to be a busy month for us. Yeah. But quite frankly, on December 5th, it's a it's a possibility. It's a idea. Yeah, uh, it's a possibility. That'll be a fairly quick meeting, okay? So, um, and it, we'll get a few things out of the way. That's sort of like housekeeping almost, you know. Um, so that'll be. Do we need a motion on that? Would you like to make a motion, Danielle, about the schedule <laughs> about change? The December fifth meeting. No, we didn't create it by motion, so just make the change. Okay. The email. All right. Fine. Right. I'll make that change, and I'll yeah. then have it resent out with the changes, okay? Good. All right, and are there any other um, any other business? Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Yes, happy yeah. Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you, Channel 22. And I will adjourn this meeting at... Uh, at this time. 9.25. Thank you very much. Adjourn at 9.25. Very good.